now tuned into Bars and Hoops Radio. Where the world of hip-hop and sports live. One thing that I learned about this game is that you can't skip the grind. You know what I mean? There's no off-seasons. There's no days on. You can't skip leg day. You can't skip arms. You can't skip chest. Go no off season, it's no season, we taking off 3D, it seals the great, we cut from a different cloth. The mother podcast, they clearly be taking shorts. We got it all covered, I'm talking music and sports. Crushing competitors, this not your regular late to 10 on Friday night, it's nothing out there sounding better, bruh. So take a seat, we kicking ass and taking names. Download the app for bars and hoops, we taking over the game. You're now tuned in to bars and hoops radio. Sports live. Where the world of hip hop and sports live, Stills the Great, 3D, DJ JOJ, no off season, every Friday, 8 to 10. Tell a friend to tell a friend, your boys is back at it again, fellas. What's good? We got a we got a great what show up, lined up, up today, up. man. You know what I'm saying? We back in the three. building. Boy, kid. Yo, three, three? Is unmatched. What's kid? up, man? I'm What's telling up, you, man? kid. Three <laughs> is unmatched. Leave me alone, man. Leave me alone, man. He gave, alone. He gave me a few My tips. God, I'm on his neck now. You, <laughs> you go in a spot with three, you might leave with a few things. Yeah. You heard the mother, man. <laughs> Yo. But shout out to everybody checking in live on Facebook. Shout out to everybody checking in live on YouTube. And shout out to everybody listening live on Bars and Hoops Radio. Like I said, we got a good show lined up for you today, man. Got a lot going on this weekend, man. NFL, divisional playoff games, man. You know, the winners of these two games goes to the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? We're gonna talk some raising Canaan because the show is getting crazier. You know what I mean? Joel Embiid out here putting up historic numbers. Carl Anthony Towns doing the same on the 18th year anniversary of Kobe scoring 81. And we're gonna talk about the all-star announcements and snubs. You know what I'm saying? Uh-oh. And how about those Knicks? And we got it, we gotta give all reserve picks. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, we know absolutely. the reserves come out uh, in another week, but absolutely. we gotta definitely give all reserves. Yeah, we definitely gonna give the reserves, man. You know what I'm saying? Benny the Butcher album also dropped, you know what I mean, yeah. today. What's your thoughts on that? We're gonna talk about that. And uh, we got a special invited guest, man. He's a Queens legend. You know what I'm saying? He's known throughout the north side, south side, all sides. Got Coach Tuck coming in and uh, towards the second hour, man. So, you know, before we get into all of that, fellas, you know how we do it, man. How was y'all week leading into today, man? And what's the weekend plans? Three, what's up? Um, Week was slow motion, man. You know what I'm saying? It's Regents week. So, salute to all the kids that took oh. Regents and all that. So, it was kind of slow for me as far as work-wise. But other than that, man, just gearing up to um finish out the remainder of the uh, basketball season. Let's and, go. Um, just looking forward to going out, uh, watching some AAU basketball once AAU season begins. You know, that's really it. And, you know, trying to, you know, keep the show going and, you know, bring y'all more guests, bring y'all more heat and uh, expand the platform. That's basically it. That's, that's what my mind is at right now. That's what it is, man. Word, man. Shout out to three for that, man. Shout out to all the coaches out there making a difference in these young men's lives, man. You know what I'm saying? It's needed out here. Shout out to Jay Remy. We see you on the check-in. J-O-J. What's good? What's Peace good, Peace Almighty. What's, What's happening? Up, man? man, my week, my week was, it was popping, man. I went to the two games, right? I went to the Knicks hey. versus Denver. That's hey. what you, you know what I mean? That and massacre. Then, um, with tips, I was with um the Nets versus the Knicks. The and massacre. Let me tell you something, In man. Brooklyn. Let me tell you something about the Knicks fans, man. Let's go. Y'all can't be coming over to Brooklyn, man, taking over like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the... I was there when 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 Kyrie ended y'all. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and, and and then now tables turn and y'all want to act like y'all that, like that's that's a little garden or something. Like, come on, man, hey, we're not having that in the Nets. You know what I'm saying? We're not having that, man. Yeah, listen, man. <laughs> Shout out to Jerry West, but, man. But otherwise than that, my week been cool. You know what I'm saying? What about you, Steels, man? Talk I mean, about it. Hey, man. You know I had a wonderful week this week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of work, a lot of things. Nothing a man can't handle. Small things to a I giant. This is Julius Randle was doing the other day. You know what I'm saying? Get him off his shoulders. But um. We gonna talk about that game, right? Of course. Okay, you, okay. You know we gonna talk about that, <laughs> man. But um, other than that, man, the week has been great, man. Um, like Jay said, great games this week, man. I wish I was at that Brooklyn game, and, and, and just to touch on that a little bit, man. It's so bad that Jerry West basically said it's time for them to pull the plug on the Brooklyn experiment and move that franchise to another state. 
that will appreciate the basketball team because it's too hard for them to overcome this city filled yeah. with Nick fans. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Everywhere I go, it's just like everybody see my jacket, my hat. They be like, yo, let's go next. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? So it's I'm, different. Go I'm ahead, going Jay. to the game. Yo, I'm going to the game. It's just mad Nick uniforms. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, you know, your team has been doing better, so it was just hype. Yeah. And I think y'all just come. That's that's for all the cheap people. The cheap people that don't want to go to the garden they and pay in. that money. They come to Brooklyn and they think they taking over, man. I, it's disgusting, man. <laughs> Randall pissed me off, man. He go over there looking with his eyes like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, where we at? Where we at? Yeah. I mean, I I, 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 um, I like the Barclays Center, man. I that's think what I you know too. what I'm saying. I, I always every time I go there, it's a good environment. You know, it's a, the fans come out. I like the setup. Um, as far as moving a locale, they'll never overtake the Knicks, regardless of how yeah. good. It's almost like the Clippers have a winning record versus the Lakers since yeah. 2012 up until now. Yeah. They still not the Lakers. That's you know what I mean? Fact. Nobody gives a fuck. You know That's what I mean? Fact. So they, I think the Brooklyn Nets could coexist in New York with uh, New York, but they just will never overtake the New York Knicks. Never. So if they if they cool with that, then keep them there. If not, I wouldn't mind it being a Jersey team or, Back you know, Jersey, go right? somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what about the building, though? Because that's the most important thing. We got a whole big arena on Flatbush Avenue. What you going to do with that? Now? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, it remains to be seen. Like this New York, like three said, man, New York is a New York town. It's hard to overcome the Knicks. You know what I'm saying? It's a Nick town, it's man. It's a Nick town. It's a Nick it's town. You know what I'm saying? That's just came. Mm -hmm. They came from Jersey, so it's not yeah. like... It's not like they've been here and we've been competing. This is like their what third, fourth, no, fourth, fifth, know, fifth. fifth. They like six, seven years now. In seven? I don't think. Yeah, so. You gotta remember when oh, KG yeah, and yeah. Paul Pierce and all of them. That's right. I'm thinking about when he was. Yeah, you gotta remember they had the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, Paul like they Pierce was, over here. And they was match? breaking down. The, you know, even well, when it was Nick. getting built. You know what <laughs> I mean? So it took a few years, but yeah. that, the Brooklyn Nets been around for uh, you know almost a decade now. Almost a decade. Yeah, almost a decade. Almost a decade. Almost a decade. They ain't moving that franchise. They'll be foolish, like three said, man. They gonna have to find a way to coexist. Shout out to Jessica on the check, and we see you. It's 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 gonna be difficult for them to just pick up and move. And I wouldn't move. Would you move out of New York? Nah, I'm I'm pretty sure Money. that franchise is not struggling financially. I, I think Facts. they're definitely turning a buck. I think business is booming over there when they're in season, and you know they throw a lot of concerts. At that exactly. venue as well. So, I mean, exactly. I don't think it's going anywhere. And they put a lot of money into it. It was a reason they picked that location. That's a whole so. fact. And they, they go, started 2012, they 2013. So, yeah, we're in 24. Look, look we're That's in 24. Oh, wow. 12, That's 12 years. Yeah. Hey, y'all got, got KG, Paul Pierce, Deron fucking... Um, um, Deron Williams, Williams, Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson, you know, yeah. They had uh, oh, yeah, Gerald Wallace right. for Facts. some time. Like, Hell yeah. You know. They, um, had, they had some teams. Within the twelve years, Devin Harris was an all star as a net as a yes, net. Um, absolutely, yeah. They, you know they had some good some good seasons, but um, they'll never you know the Knicks will always be king in New York as far as basketball is concerned. Like facts, that's not going nowhere. And the Garden will always be the Garden. So the Garden is lit, different. unmatched, unmatched. Yeah, for sure. That shit hurt three man. I mean, it's the, tr it's the truth. It's the truth, brother. It's the truth. The truth shall set you free. Don't come up in here, man. What all that barking and shit? It's the Tips all in my fucking ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but but as far as the week, man, like I said, man, it's nice and smooth, man. It was a little terrible weather, but today the weather wasn't bad. Um, a little muggy rain, you know what I'm saying? But other than that, man, woke up today, man, happy to be here. And excited for this show, man. You know, we got, like I said, a whole legend coming today, man. Interesting to talk with Tut, man, about a lot of things that he was into. I'm not sure how much people know about Tut, but I'm going to wait till he get here to share his story. You know what I'm saying? Because I know it's a lot that'll probably surprise a lot of people out there. But um, I'm looking forward to uh, the weekend, man, the football games. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. AFC championship game. We got the two black quarterbacks. Oh, man. Yeah. Going black at power. it. You know what I mean? You got the black power. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got um, Pat Mahomes versus Lamar Jackson. You know, and, and like I said before, man, Lamar, and I don't think three was here, man. Three guy came late that day. But it's like, why why does Lamar Jackson get the short end of the stick all the time? The man is like a video game out there. He's about to win back-to-back -back MVPs. You know what I'm saying? His team right now is favored to not only go to the uh, Super Bowl, but they're, they're a slight edge to win the Super Bowl over the San Francisco 49ers. But what is it with everybody? When he came out of college, they tried to convert him to a wide receiver. They tried to turn him into a cornerback. He'll never be good enough to be a quarterback in the NFL. It was always something. They they 
before they won last week's playoff game, they kept bringing up his playoff record and all this stuff. This is the best team that he's had since yeah. he's been there as far as defense, receivers, running game. He always had a tight end. But what's, what, what is it with Lamar Jackson? Is it his last name? It's too black? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Sweet. Huh? Yeah. All of that? Yeah. <laughs> black and black. Basic, basic, basically, Lamar. You ain't not seeing a Jax. white boy named Lamar. You know what I mean? <laughs> Lamar Jackson, you know Racist. what I'm saying? Like it is what it is. I mean, it could be yeah. um misevaluation, I think. Even with him coming out of college, you know, it, I think they misevaluated him. That's you know a what fact. I mean? From where he was selected. You know what That's I mean? Now fact. look at look where he is now. You know what I mean? Sometimes they miss. You know Whole what I mean? You know, I mean well, it's obvious we see that, you know what I mean? But you know, he's doing his thing and I think he is gonna continue to do his thing and at some point you're gonna eventually have to get that man his respect. Yeah. Because he earned it. He earned he definitely it. definitely earned it. He man. earned it. Jay, what you think about that? Yeah, man. Um, he was supposed to be a Jet. If they he was supposed to be a Jet. Oh, I mean, man. The, jet could, the Jets could have had him, but they went to Aaron Rodgers. Go ahead. Oh, man. Yeah, but, um, you know, the black man is God, man. They wanna, they don't <laughs> peace on, man. Peace on, You know, they don't want to <laughs> give him his props. You know what I mean? Um, he's doing good. I think he's, he just got to win a Super Bowl, man. You know what I'm saying? Win a Super Bowl. That's and that'll, that'll, that'll quiet a lot of people. You know what I I'm hope saying? So. I hope this so. This is the first time in um in this conference conference finals? Uh, I think this is the second. No, this is the first I think it's his first trip. Yeah, yeah first, first trip. trip. Yes, it's his first trip. Oh, so he's yes. knocking on the door. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and all they're going to say then is that, oh, he beat a weak Kansas City team to go to the Super Bowl. They're going to always find I mean, that something. comes with the territory, man. You can't pick your opponent at this point. You know Facts. what I'm saying? So you got to, you know. Knock off who's in front of you. I mean, Fact. they can say what they want to say. If he get to the Super Bowl championship game, he he accomplished something that that goes on his resume. You know That's what I mean? Play in a in a Super Bowl. That's a whole fact, man. You know what I'm saying? But on the other end, man, I I gotta give props to Pat Mahomes because no matter who he has on the sideline with him, um, or on the on the field with him. He performs. He get it done. He gets it done with whoever he got. People complained about the wide receivers outside of Travis Kelsey. He got it done with the pieces that he had. Isaiah Pacheco had a hell of a season running the football. Andy Reid is battle tested, you know, through all the years of him in the NFC with the Philadelphia Eagles and then coming over to the AFC and then dominating with the Kansas City Chiefs. It's like they're primed, and I was surprised that they went into Buffalo Last week and beat the Bills. Shout out to my guy Tone Richburg. I know you was hurting. Yeah, he, but you know, he didn't speak to me for like a whole week. He just called Bills, me today. Bills is cursed. <laughs> niggas is cursed. <laughs> Talk about it. Word up. Niggas is cursed. Word. How you miss a uh, what was that thirty yard field goal? Like, come yes. on, bro. You got one job. What the fuck? <laughs> one job. One job. Like I have money on them clowns, man. Oh, you put bread on them? Yeah, man. Oh God, man. Thought it was a time. I thought you know they could they could um. <sighs> Man. Thought they could, you know, get it done. But I mean, we'll see. It's gonna be interesting. Uh huh. It's gonna be interesting. Uh huh. And, and and on the uh, NFC side, you know, you got, you know, Dan Campbell leading the Detroit Lions to a territory that they've never been in. Like this is the furthest. Oh, this is the first been. conference signing for them. And all okay. the great players that they had from Barry wow. Sanders to Herman Moore to Megatron. Now, you know, Matt Stafford. You know, he ended up leaving and. You know, now Jared Goff, who was a reject in LA, is full is pulling these guys over the hump, man, with the with the help of Dan Campbell, man. And it looks like the betting side is saying that the 49ers are huge favorites, but the person that really watches the game thinks that this game is gonna be a lot better than people in Nah, it ain't gonna be no walk in the park. No I got facts. I got Let's the go. I got the Niners, but Woo! um it's not going to be a walk in the park, and I think all the pressure is on the Niners. So, wow, it, you know, the the money the money is on. You know, uh -huh. if if you're a smart man, a betting man, uh -huh. you might throw a little bit of chips. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> on Detroit, <laughs> just in case. But I'm still going to go with the Niners. I think you know. What I mean, I think the Niners going to get it done. Okay, okay. What's your thoughts, Jay? Um, I'm, you know me. I go with the underdog, man. So. You're going, going with Detroit. Definitely going with Detroit? Detroit, man. I'm going with Detroit, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. they're going to do it for Barry, man. One time for Barry, for Barry man. Sanders? Yeah. Man, he was different, man. Word up, man. And shout out to Detroit, man. They, You know, I don't know if y'all ever been to Detroit, man, but if you've been to Detroit, man, you know, 
they downtown area was was hurting, man. You know, that was the auto industry at one point in time. And, you know, once that went down, just like Ohio with the steel industry, once that went down, everything went down. Oh, yeah, you know I've been to Ohio. They, like, they Manhattans uh-huh. look like the Bronx in 87. You know wow. what I'm saying? Yeah, that's how bad it is. Like, uh-huh. buildings closed, office buildings boarded up. It's, it was wild. I went out there in 2015. So, you know, it's a hard-working city. Shout out to the D Pauls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never been to Detroit. Never, but, but nah. But I met a lot, a lot of nice people. Yeah, from Detroit. Oh yeah, especially females. Shout out to the ladies out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you look at you know with what I got on right now at home with Detroit, you know what I mean? This is they, this is they swag right here. You know what I mean? The buffs, the fat, the buffs right here. This is they swag. Oh, I heard word. they, I heard they don't do the wood no more like that. But, word. You know what I mean? But th- this is, this is that's home of Detroit. But shout out to Detroit. Facts. Yeah, word, man. Yeah, Detroit is definitely different, man. If you ever get a chance to go there, make sure you go there because you want to visit Hitsville. You know what I'm saying? Motown, where Motown started. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Great museum. Get a lot of history in there, man. It's a good look to just go visit it. Even if you take a day trip out there, I'm big into that, man. Because I, I, I wanna, I'm about to do some shit, man. I wanna. It's a restaurant in Cincinnati that I wanna try. They do the whole Jordan cake and all of that. It's oh, a steakhouse. Yeah, it okay. looks crazy. I'm going to try it. So I might just take That's not a far trip. drive, too, right? I'm not like, driving. Oh. Absolutely not. Man. I think I did that before. Floor, I man. did that like, the crazy shit before. Uh-huh. <laughs> nah, I think I'm I not did doing that. that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah. the driver either. Like, I'm not the guy that want to <laughs> get on the road and drive for, Damn, for eight, nine, ten hours. Like, no, that's not me. I'm getting on a plane. Facts. I'm not. Come on, man. Yo, let me tell you. I mean, if we go on a road trip and we split in the time and it's like, yo, you do two, you do two, then you. Yeah, I, I could rock with that, but me just doing seven, eight straight. Throwing nah. a couple albums, man. A couple <laughs> albums of you there, shout man. Out to J-O-J. Eight albums. Shout, eight out, to, your shout best, out to your Jay, because Jay used albums. to do that all the time. He used to do that all the time. All right. I think, did yeah. we go out there? Was that Ohio we went to? No, that was three. Oh, Jay, that, you did that? We did that party. No, no, no. I'm talking about I'm talking about Super He used to do that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, we drove out there. Me and Chuck, we drove out there. And I think they flew. Did y'all fly that year? What you talking about? When what? they went to um, that was in Ohio when Jay was doing that. Ohio Super Jay? was we in Ohio? No, I know I, what you talking about, but I don't think it was, it was Ohio. Okay, it was somewhere out of town, but it wasn't Ohio. Uh, it might have been um. You probably talking about upstate? We went upstate a couple of times, and we all drove. You know, what okay. I mean, that's three hours. Okay, but those trips to Buffalo was you know. Shout out to Buffalo. Right Shout out to Buffalo. Yeah, those trips right to Buffalo was like if you if you gunning it. You could get there in a good seven, eight. Yeah, because eight hours to get there. Yeah, but we was right. getting there like six and a half, seven. Ooh, yeah, I was Ooh. definitely tearing up that throughway. Yeah, yeah well, we was getting up there like that. seven. Word. Wow, man. Word, man. But, um, you know, hopefully it's some good games this week, man. You know what I mean? Like like we said, the 49ers is a slight edge. Well, not slight. They got them favored by, I believe, a touchdown. But I believe it's going to be a good game, man. I don't think it's going to be a, a walk in the park like we said. But let's talk about man some 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 raising Canaan, man. What's your thoughts on the series thus far, man? And I don't know, man, but me, it looked like they set Lulu up to die, man. Lou is a sucker. Uh, talk about it. We're gonna me. start let's right go. there, let's man. Go, Lou was Lou was Lou is a sucker. Lou started out <laughs> as one of the guys. He was looking good money. The only thing I didn't like was I only thing I didn't like was how, you know, he 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 really didn't embody somebody from Southside. Like, he he, yeah. he fit the description, but his delivery wasn't... Like, I'm sitting there like, I would have killed this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm sitting there like, I would have killed this role. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out to three. But Yo, he, he really- turned out he turned out to be the... He's the ill sucker. Like, and oh, I do believe that... Shit. I do believe that he's going to be offed. And if you saw the preview going into the next episode, he says, he says, Ronnie, don't let it kill me. Cause he, he think cause they got Lou in the joint and Detective Howard is talking to him, but Lulu's running his mouth and Howard's like shut the fuck up, and then Rock walks in. Oh. So it's like I think that Rock is gonna get Detective Howard to snatch Lulu up, and Lulu's just running his mouth, man. Lulu went from one of the fan favorites to a sucker, man. Wow. He telling he's telling and all that. Now he's just a fucking lush and a drunk, <laughs> tweaking. <laughs> word like i'm keeping it real yo and, and, and ronnie like yo ronnie is i don't know three said he keep changing his shirts 
But he looked like he wear the same thing like Mr. Rogers every day. <laughs> but his whip game is official. Even the whip that he jacked. He's like, yo, nice car. Well. Give it, come up off of that. Word. Nah, he's, he's, that. he's changing, bro. Like, huh? he... He's wearing the same, that little same fucking members only jacket, but <laughs> he's definitely changing his, un, like, he got on a sweater sometimes, and sometimes he got on a collar shirt, yeah. and sometimes he got on different joints, but he changing up. He might have on the same blue jeans, but he changing his outfit. You just got to pay attention, but Ronnie's 730, but going going into uh, the next episode, I knew what was going to happen, and that was... um. Juliana rock off in Juliana. Oh yeah, because yeah, definitely clapped up. that that turns off Ronnie's water. That's a because that's Ronnie's connect. So it was like I'm hurting Ronnie and Kanan without hurting them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. she didn't bring it right to them. Fact. She went like I got a grudge with this bitch anyway. Fact. You know what I'm saying? So she just had to go get her cousin's blessing Fact. to do it. So I, yes, I like did. I like that angle. I like that angle that they took because now we gonna see where Ronnie got to get his work from. Cause they gonna know it was rock. Facts, facts. That shit, yo. The South Side, the South Side packets. You know what I'm saying? And Panessa yeah. told without really knowing she was telling. Yes, she did. She did. So well, if you I ain't watched it, you ain't watched the episode yet. You might not want to hear what we talking about. Hey, but man, I'm pretty say, sure, man. pretty sure everybody done you know tuned in. Tune in, kid. Cause I, it's much more. See, I, I watched it last night. I ain't gonna hold you. I was struggling to stay up. Too, but <laughs> Did I made you stay sure. up? <laughs> I, I watched it. I watched it before I got here. Yeah, I watched it before I came over. Yeah, I, I was struggling. And shout out to Jessica. She said she watched half of it. Well, Jess, we kind of spoiled it. You might want to now. Don't tune out now. Now nah, it's still you know a good saying? watch, whether you know what's going on or not. It's That's still a, a good fact. watch. You know what I mean? So she said, "Ronnie, you ever had a woman?" I said, "Yes, I did." What you mean? Not long. This thing is only two word, two word ass thing. But he out here know how to move them drugs. But this is why I don't understand why the Razor Canaan community believes that Ronnie is Breeze. Yeah, I don't believe that. I don't understand. I don't believe that. I don't think. I think. I think that um, Breeze is gonna be amongst the crew that Snaps is around. So I think that Canaan is gonna meet Breeze amongst some of the players that Ronnie and Snaps deal with i don't think that um i don't think ronnie is breeze yeah, yeah ronnie, nah. yeah i don't think ronnie's breeze ronnie's yeah. too much of a weirdo to have another nickname yeah, yeah fact shout out no shout it, out it i time. mean it it and yeah. i think that I'm ready to i hear that the way he move but i think that um they always give us something to try to distract us they always give right. us something to try to make you believe that yeah. but it's something else so right. I don't. I mean, that's just me. I don't. I don't think that Ronnie is breeze. I don't think Ronnie's gonna make it through a few more seasons. I think I Ronnie. Think so yeah, I don't think he's gonna make it. I think he the next one. Like one of the guys. I think he wanted the next one, and I think it might be Kanan to be the one that have to do him dirty. Yeah, yeah. Cause he he don't seem like he's scared of him at all. Kanan don't seem like he's scared of him, and he moving he moving well. And he could him get him next him. to him because yeah. he trusts him. Shout out to Tiny. He ain't gonna. I mean, he's an interesting character. He's an interesting character. He's an interesting character. But it always got to be a. It always has to be a villain that gets off. Facts. Not. I think when Ronnie. I think. I think. I think when Breeze appears, Ronnie will exit. That's what I think. I think. Remember, look how they inserted Ronnie Paul's into <laughs> into the situation. We didn't know nothing about Ronnie. We That's just a fact. he just popped up. Yeah, he did. His character just popped up. Yeah. So I think to keep the show going, to yeah. keep it interesting, to keep us entertained, yeah. another person has to pop up, and that next person is Breeze. Uh, yeah, so how are they going to introduce a new character? Yeah, it, it's I don't know. As they got to get rid of Ronnie. Exactly. They got to get rid of Ronnie. They got to get rid of Ronnie to introduce Breeze. You're right. It makes sense. It makes sense. And shout out to three because he said. Kanan was going to run with Ronnie. I told y'all that I was before like, it happened. Get the fuck out of here. And then it happened. You know what I'm saying? It, we it ain't just, unique it dying. just makes sense. Yeah, it do make sense, man. Now, now, what's y'all thoughts on Famous now? Famous ain't making it out of this season. Either Kanan going to do him dirty or Ronnie going to do him dirty. What you think? I don't, I don't know what Famous' real name is. It ain't Tommy. Famous' real name is Sean. Sean? Well, oh. oh, yeah, 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 that's true. 
Yeah, shout out to Tiny, man. Word it up, man. Yeah, yeah, word. That's crazy. Kane ain't gonna end up killing him. I real. think, I think, I think uh, Famous makes it to next season. Think he gonna make it to next season? Yeah. That record, confess, he confessing on that record. They looking at the body now. I don't know. He may not. He, I don't know if he's going to. I don't know who. I don't know who would have a motive to want to really. He ain't really do nothing crazy unless he, he tell on himself. But he really ain't. Kanan would have been did that if he had nah. it. Like nothing really happened. Like famous is famous is kind of flying under the radar. Like in last season where we really didn't see Lou. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. they kind of fizzling his part out a little bit. But I think yeah. that he is eventually going to get offed. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be by internally or if it's going to be by the streets. But. I don't. I think he's gonna make it through this season because there's only like three episodes left. Three episodes left. I yeah. think he's gonna make it. I I believe that if if I had to guess that anybody's gonna get off, I think it's gonna be Lou, because I think yeah. Lou is reckless out yeah. here, and I yeah. think that he hurts the business, and I think that um the Thomas family has to take a L. Facts. And Facts. and this is what I didn't understand. Like we we still have to figure out why is Kanan's last name is Kanan Stark. Yeah. When he's a Thomas, that's a fact. So that's was fact. uh, the pop's name Stark? Nah, I don't know. remember Defcon's name being nah, Stark. But remember, they they verified that it's that Defcon wasn't his father. Exactly, but he was posing as his father. So would his name be on a birth certificate? Where does? Uh, and I Stark think that's a loose end that they couldn't probably Put tie up because they probably didn't know they was going to do Razor Canaan until. After they the got fact. all all the uh so they gotta put that in there somewhere. He probably tried to change his identity, so he dropped Thomas and made his last name Stark. That's a fact. And then you know what? And shout out to Jessica. She said that they said that famous was locked up with Kane and Empower. So, that's what that's some YouTube shit. I seen yeah. that shit. Oh, okay, okay. I seen that okay. shit. Okay. They trying to say he the he was the Puerto Rican guy that was in the cell with Kane and talking about, yeah, because this is what's going on. I seen oh, that, but I don't okay. believe that. I think I, I don't think that I don't think that famous makes it out of this show. Yeah, nah, <laughs> I mean, I think not. at some point he gets. Oh, he's a weak link. Yeah, yeah, because there's nothing really for him to really do. He ain't rapping like that no more. If Lou go, then he's definitely out of here. But you see, he's trying to utilize the studio now while Lou ain't around to make music. And I don't know if they're trying to make a, 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 a extra scene for him to keep going like with this whole studio business now but i don't think he's on last man. and we we got it we got to keep our eyes open on the uh marvin storyline with the white dude oh, yeah. trying to backdoor him because he don't want to go to jail oh, marvin gonna end up killing marvin him. gonna end up having to you know do he's him dirty, dirty and we gotta see what happened with the kids because yeah. i think at this time i think marvin kind of softened up a little bit like he don't have a problem doing the dirty work yeah. but I think in that situation he might sec he might think about it a little bit or he might send somebody else to do it yeah. because of the situation with the daughters calling him Uncle Marvin and all that that's shit that's a fact and shout out to Marvin kid he put that work in and Jersey came in like the post office man dolo like this and blah, and ended up getting away man so it remains to be seen man it's a great show man I love it Thus far, like three said, it's three more episodes left, man. I can't wait to see how it turns out. You know what I'm saying? But let's let's shift on over to a little bit of this NBA talk, man. You know, you know, Joel Embiid is out here like he's on a mission. Like he, you know, he he torched the Joker when they went up against each other, and he's been torching the Joker. He always busts. Yeah, his ass. every time. Yeah, he has a seventy piece of a day. He made it his business to torch Wimby. <laughs> That Talk was that was like it. a Talk let me let, let me show you the separation and you know it just happened to be on the anniversary of Kobe's eighty one mm -hmm. and you know Carl he, Anthony he, Towns gave yeah. sixty two that two. night a lot of guys yeah he went crazy that night as well but mm -hmm. you know Embiid is just you know he's a tough cover um I think that Philly has something I think that even I think that even if they make a move it strengthens their chances but um just looking at the playoff picture. I think Miami got better with the addition of Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier? I think well, he's going to help them. We're going to see them um, tomorrow. Yeah, I think the Knicks are in a good position. They're playing excellent. I just think that um, out of the top three teams I have in the East, which is Boston, um, Milwaukee, and Philly, I think the best matchup for New York, and I think I think y'all got a better chance, and a lot of people might not agree with this, I think y'all have a better chance versus Boston than 
Philly or Milwaukee. I think because Boston will uh, settle for threes and shoot a lot of jump shots, whereas Milwaukee and Philly, Embiid is a matchup problem. He could probably foul out your entire front line. And That's a fact. Milwaukee is just, you know, they're, they're big as well. Paul's on the front line. You know what I mean? With Giannis and Brooke Lopez and Bobby Portis and those guys. And I'm interested to see what Doc does. Mm-hmm. I think that Doc is going to help them because, like I said before, we started off air. What Griffin didn't do was he didn't demand them to be solid on the defensive end. However, he didn't incorporate Damian Lillard into that offensive system. He didn't know how to. So it's like, why would we give up Drew Holiday, Grayson Allen, multiple draft picks for you not to maximize this guy that we brought over who proven that he's a top 15, top 10 NBA player? But but I mean three. Let's be honest. That's not that's not an easy job. I mean, you got, it's def- you got a champion in Giannis who brought a championship to Milwaukee in over what over fifty years since they won a championship. But this is what, it's his team. Yeah, with a new coach. How does a new coach yeah. come in there and just make that? So you think Giannis didn't like sign that? off on Dame being acquired? No, I'm not saying that that didn't happen. But he's still a big dog over there. I know it's that, still but my, but but um. Why hire a rookie coach if you have championship aspirations with a veteran group? That's what that's not up. the job for a rookie coach. Facts. It's the same thing when they they put David Blatt in that seat and he was doing well. And they got rid. Of and him. they got rid of him and Ty Lue took over and they won a chip. That's a fact. You get what I'm saying? That's so my thing is like somebody said in the bars and who on the page on mm-hmm. Facebook he was saying about group. Damian Lillard is a. I'm like you talking about Damian Lillard like. Adrian Griffin didn't build a strong relationship with his best two players. He didn't incorporate Damian Lillard into the offense. That's a fact. So it's like he got to be held accountable. He's not living up to the expectations of management and the GM. So my thing is, and I knew that it was a problem when September Terry Stotts walked away from the team. He resigned. Yeah, if yeah. you know basketball, Terry Stotts was Damian Lillard's coach for over a decade in, in Portland. In Portland so he was going to be the bridge to get Damian Lillard into that system. Mm-hmm. And he walked away because Adrian Griffin was feeling himself. That's a fact. He was like, oh, okay, this is your team. Because right. what I heard was it was they was in practice. It was Terry Stotts Shout talking to three. Terry Stotts was talking to Dame, campaign, and another person. And Adrian Griffin wanted to huddle up with the coaches. And Terry Stotts was like, we'll be over in a second. We talking. And he was like, man, break that shit up. Come over. And two days later, Terry Stotts resigned. Wow. So Terry wow. Stotts probably looking at him like, you a fucking rookie coach. Like, I, you want, I, you brought me to your staff because I'm here to age you. Facts. And then on top of that, y'all go and hire Doc Rivers as a fucking consultant. consultant. Yeah, yeah. So if your head coach needs consultation... He probably shouldn't be a head coach. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a whole fact. So I think that um, I knew he was going to get fired. I didn't think that Doc would be his replacement. But if you ask me right now, who would I want coaching the Bucks, Doc Rivers or Adrian Griffin? I'm going with Doc. Doc Rivers, yeah, he got the he got the experience, man. He got a championship under his belt. I mean, he does some good Philadelphia 76ers teams far, but he didn't get over the hump with Joel Embiid and 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 Ben Simmons before all the problems. So. Who knows how this one is going to turn out. But the out. thing is, he knows how to handle star players. Like, he's yeah. managed stars before. Yes. Adrian Griffin hasn't managed stars before. That's a fact. Because if we're being realistic, all those guys have egos, and you have to be able to manage Dang. those egos and know how to communicate with them. Doc, for all his shortcomings, he does have that. He does have his playing resume to lean on, and he does That's have all the star players that he's coached in the past. That's a whole fact. So, I mean, I I think that they just, you know, they threw the trash out. Not call Angel Game Trash. They just got ahead of themselves because, like, why are we paying Doc to consult us when we could just Hire him. bring him in as a coach? That's like, a we're pay, actually paying Griffin just to listen to him. That's a fact. That's a fact. What and I, I never liked Griffin because I didn't like his rotations. I didn't man, like I a lot of the stuff that, that he was doing. Like, yeah, I was saying that from the beginning, man. I don't think that he would have been a good fit with that team because they didn't look cohesive like you said he wasn't even implementing Dame and saying the way Dame was playing was like he was miserable like damn man what I'm doing here I miss Portland you know what I'm saying and then 
turn around, they end up getting rid of the coach after a 30 and 13 record. You know, so obviously it was like you said, a lot of things behind the scenes. It was it was a lot that was non basketball. It was more so you're not connecting with the best players. You're not connecting with the group. They don't really respect you, and you're not playing on top. But that's what happens with players. When players are not happy, they they don't defend. You know what I mean? So I'm watching games where it might be five possessions in a row. Damian Lillard doesn't even take a shot. Yeah, that that's not supposed to happen. Facts. You get what I'm saying? So that's almost like if you watch a Nick game and Jalen Brunson, it's seven possessions in a row, and Jalen Brunson don't get a field goal attempt. Yeah, I, you're looking at it like, what's going on? I noticed that three. Yeah, yeah, when um Brooklyn played the the Bucks, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. It was like he wasn't even out there. Like hey, he wasn't I in the right frame. You will forget like, that he's on the court. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I actually forgot he was on the court. He wasn't even taking shots. It was just like he was in limbo, like just walking around, you know, just chilling. Like yeah. he wasn't even involved, you know. Yeah, he didn't care. He was like, "All right, man, I gotta find my." Try, way. For one, that's trying to fit in. That's trying to fit in. You in a new environment. You trying to fit in. You know, you playing with Giannis. It's his team, et cetera, et cetera. However, if you're the coach, you put him in situations where he can't be passive. Fact. So now, when Giannis is off the floor. This is Dame's offense, mm-hmm. and he's gonna. Everybody else has to play off him. So when the guy in the group was saying, "Oh, um, Griffin just wanted him to average the most assists of his career," bro, you're not <laughs> changing a player in year twelve. He's not coming to Milwaukee to average twelve assists. Right. He's coming to walk Milwaukee to be the same Damian Lillard that he's been his entire career. And that's a three level scorer and an explosive guard. Facts. Like that's basically it, and I think he is gonna play better under Doc Rivers. And even with all that is said, the brother's still averaging twenty five and seven. Nah, he, he is. No, I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't gonna hold you. He is. That's, that's a great. talent. That's a talent to have, man. Word up. But I'm glad you said that. He's averaging twenty five and seven, and he was one of the Eastern Conference All Stars that was announced. So let's talk a little bit about the All Star. Starters that was announced. So, on the Eastern Conference side, let's start with the Eastern Conference since we're talking about an Eastern Conference team. You got Giannis Antetokounmpo, Joel Embiid, Jason Tatum, Tyrese Halliburton, Dame Lillard. On the Western Conference side, LeBron James, not a shock, fan favorite. LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic, and shout out to Shea Gilchrist Alexander. Oh, he made it? For, wow. Yeah, of course, for, for, for taking yeah. that. He took that this year. So, out of all of those names and all of those starters on the east and west side, which where do you feel the biggest snub happened? I'm going to start with you three. Don't start with me. Start with J.O.J. I, I, well, I, I got to so look at me, it. I got to look at it. J, all right, all right, so, so, for me, so I'll start with me. As my, we just talked about Dame, even though he's having a subpar season thus far, he's averaging 25 and 7. But Jalen Brunson is averaging the same amount of numbers on a team, a team with less talent. And he's killed, I think, Damon Lillard on, on the head to head matchups this whole year. And I know you that sure? doesn't mean anything. You sure about I that? I mean, it's just one game Dame got the best of them, but look, but um They but only <laughs> they you sure about that? They played three times. Okay, so you sure Two about one. he killed them on the head to head? Uh-huh. <laughs> Are you sure about it? That's all yeah. I'm asking. Are yes, you I'm sure? sure? Yes. So if they played three times, you saying you saying the Brunson Knicks lost the game. But Brunson got the best. <laughs> so Brunson got what, the best. What are we match. talking about? That's the only reason why they probably gave him a nod, because if it came down to numbers. What? Hold on, hold on, hold on, because I had I had this Let's debate the, the day that the game happened. Let's go. The game that Brunson got off. Brunson uh-huh. got busy. 40. They played. Yeah. 40 piece. Okay. And and I think, Dame, what did Dame have that game? Dame had like about 27 to, to probably 30 points. He didn't have 40. He didn't. Brunson I don't I don't even think Brunson had 40. I no, think Brunson. Brunson look ahead, it up. Ahead, I don't. I remember the thing because my thing is, somebody hit me and was like, um... Dame didn't want that smoke. And I'm like... Facts. No, no, that's not facts. You know why it's not facts? Because if we go to the park and Tiny's the point guard and I'm the point guard and Tiny's checking me, but I'm not checking him, how is that me running from the smoke? Uh, 
Yeah, and I if I if too. I'm if I'm guarding you, how am I running from the smoke? If I'm guarding you, but on the other end, you're not guarding me. So it wasn't really a head to head. And then I asked my man, I said, how many times you think that Jalen Brunson guarded Damian Lillard versus vice versa? Nah, fuck all that. He didn't want to answer. He went to <laughs> nah, fuck all that because. Brunson made sure he didn't go yeah. n- near none of that. Yeah. And that's the thing I hate about today's game. It's hard to kind of say it's not mano y mano anymore. It's it's mm-hmm. and and again, if you have a guard who's the primary focal point of your offense, uh-huh. you're not gonna go make him guard the other team's better guard that is gonna be offensively aggressive. I get that. But don't turn around and say Oh, he bust his ass when it's not mano y mano. All right, so so you can so, tell me he outplayed him. He I, outplayed I'll take him. that, Fact. but you're not going to tell me he bust his ass. <laughs> yeah. Because me being a foreign player, as that, it's like if if I'm getting off, but a nigga won't check me, but he getting off and I'm guarding him. It's only the opportunity one way because I'm guarding you. You're not guarding me. That's true too. That that's a valid point. You're not guarding me. But so, I, but no, I'm but checking I you. That. I mean, that's why so many people respect Kobe in former plays because he guarded the best player. Somebody just said this recently. I forgot who it was. Matter of fact, it was Paul George. Uh-huh. He said, "I I I went to a game in Orlando. Kobe and T Mac was going at each other. T Mac was busting Kobe ass." He said, but T-Mac wasn't guarding Kobe on the other end. Uh-huh. So T-Mac had about 37. Kobe had about 35. But it wasn't the same matchup because Kobe took the challenge. Mac didn't. All right. So, so if I told you that in the matchups between Jalen Brunson and, 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 and Dame Lillard this season – Jalen Brunson is averaging 35 points a game. Would you believe it? If they play less than five games, I don't give a fuck. No, they play four games. They play if, four Like games. I just said, if they play less than five Come games, on, man. What, I don't give a fuck. But three, what you the mean? Co- what is the career head-to-head if you want to do that? Okay. Go to the career head-to-head. We talk about this season. Come Go to the, to no, 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 no. Because if they play less than five games... It don't matter. But they play. They only. That's not a big enough sample. Exactly. That's not a big enough sample size. We talking about this season. We forget the career. We talking about Damon in in Milwaukee, and we talking Brunson. But outplaying somebody doesn't mean you're better than. I'm not. I'm not saying that. But you can say that for this year. At least this this year. year. No, the fuck you can't. The first (laughs) first game. The first (laughs) game that they played this year was on November the third. Jalen Brunson gave him a 40-piece, like I said. It was 45, 5, and 4. The second game they played was December the 5th. Brunson had 24, 3, and 6. You only calling out his number. I'm going to call Dame out next. In the third game that they played, Jalen Brunson gave him 36, 3, and 6. No, Jalen Brunson had. Don't say gave him. (laughs) Come on, (laughs) man. Come on, man. 36, (laughs) 3, and 7. And in the last game on Christmas, he gave him 38. Four and six. You said 43, 40 something. Uh, I knew he didn't have 40 something. Uh, uh-huh. I think he had 38, and, and uh, Dame Lillard probably had 31. Dame, or some Dame shit Lillard like had that. 32 that game. What the fuck are we but, talking hold about? On, hold on, you hold had 38, on. I had 32 in right, a so, win. All right, all right, hold on. That was Christmas. All right, so Dame had 32 on Christmas. Brunson had 38. The, the 23rd, two days before, Dame had 19. Brunson had 36. The game before that, Dame had 28. Brunson had 24, and in the first game, Dame had 30, Brunson had 45. So, again, he outplayed him this season thus far, head-to-head matchups. And you, you, we can't do a career comparison because Brunson's career was in Dallas behind Luka. He wasn't even a starter. Nah, you know he was I mean? a starter. He ended I up mean, a starter. He ended up being he ended a, up starter. a starter. He ended up being a starter. It wasn't long. He wasn't there long. It wasn't like he was there five years before he became a starter. He became a starter like in year three. But he's still playing with a ball dominant guy. Like and he Luka was Dunn. still getting off. Huh? And he was still getting off. Fair enough. But again, their job description is not the same. It's not because if you Absolutely. put if you if you're telling me 
Jalen Brunson is averaging 25. What do you average? 25? This season? He averages 25. He about 27. 27, 27 a game in New York. Yeah. Yet nobody on this planet can tell me if I put Damian Lillard on his same Knicks roster, uh -huh. took Jalen Brunson out, he not averaging a 30 ball in New York, taking 19 to 20 shots a game. It's no he way is. in hell. He's no, not. He is. He is. I, I give that to no you. No way in hell. He is. So, so you validating to bring it back full circle? You validating Damian Lillard over Jalen Brunson? The only star. reason that I don't call it a snub, if you ask me, who would I have? Who who I think is deserving of the starting job? Uh -huh. I was gonna say Jalen Brunson because he's been more consistent this se this first half of the season than uh -huh. than Damian Lillard has been. Okay. However, the reason why I don't call it a snub is because. He lost the starting job to Lillard because of fan voting. It wasn't because of the play. The fans did that. Damian Lillard is more visible to the basketball world than Jalen Brunson is. Like everybody That's knows that. Everybody knows the starters is politics. That's it's guys fact. that don't even. It's guys that don't even belong. Sometimes as starters, and they start. It was a time that Fox should have overtook Curry, but Curry still started because. That's and I always say this: if you want, if you wanted, if you like Jamal Murray, Jamal uh -huh. Murray has a ring. Jamal Murray's a top ten Jamal guard Murray in the got league. The clips, put Jamal, on the Jamal Murray. <laughs> shout out to OG. Shout out to OG. Yeah. But Jamal Murray has never been an All Star. Jamal he's Murray has no All Star appearances. But he's in a tough conference. Exactly. This is what I'm saying. He can't just get selected or voted in. He have to take that shit. That's you not fact. beating out Steph Curry. Chris Paul was still there. De Devin Fox. Booker, De'Aaron Fox, Luka Donich. You not beating those guys out unless you take it from them. Did they get so snubbed? that little that little twenty two a game? No. That little twenty two a game ain't getting it done. That's when Shea is averaging thirty four, <laughs> Steph is averaging thirty, Luka's league. averaging thirty three. Yeah. You gotta yeah. go take that. Facts. It can't be no dispute. Yeah. So Jalen left it for a dispute. Now Jalen was averaging a thirty ball. Come on, three. How I'm you just keeping say it he leaving for a dispute because Damian Lillard is Damian Lillard. Had in years. You gonna let me finish yeah, or, let's go. or not? Come on, let's go, 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 go. Come on. For you all of this, you for all of this, you telling me that huh? he's averaging twenty seven and the Knicks are winning. Of course, Dame is still right there, averaging twenty five and seven, <laughs> and ain't even ain't even at where we know he usually at. And that's not gonna be the same. But this is what I'm saying. It's it's not really. It's not really him surpassing him where it's like, now, if he was putting up 29, 30 a game and yeah. eight assists, yeah. that's different. Yeah. Like Tyrese, nigga, that's 24 and 12. That's a double-double at the point guard position. So and saying, he's in Indiana. Yeah, and he's starting. He's starting. So what are we saying? I'm, so, I'm not saying that. So you're telling me if Brunson didn't average 25 and 10, he's not was it going to be a starter? Hell yeah. You averaging yeah. a double-double at the backcourt. Yeah, yeah. So that little 26 and 7 is cute, but you got to take it <laughs> if you want to be the yeah, starter. Yeah, yeah listen. We're going to have to table this, man. We it is. Our, I'm we being real. Special. We, we ain't going to do that today, nigga. Bro, it is. We, we ain't it doing is. that today, nigga. We got our special invited guests in the building. We're going to take it to a DJ, JLJ, spin cycle first, man. Don't forget, the number to call in is 516-206-0711. Bars and Hoops Radio, no off season. Check in with us. And if you want to hear the DJ JLJ spin cycle, go and download the Bars and Hoops Radio app because we will mute this because we're not trying to lose any viewers on social media right now. Go to Apple, go to your Android market, download the Bars and Hoops Radio app, and tune in to hear the DJ JLJ mini mix. Peace. Back to live action. Shout out to DJ JOJ for that mini yes, mix. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What up, man? Word, man. We come to the part of our show. We got our special invited guests in the building. Friend to the room, legend to the hood. Goes by the name of Coach Tut. Coach Tut. Tuss to the rack in the building. Bars and hoops. Let's Thanks go, for man. having me. Yes, sir, man. Shout out to Coach Tut, man, for pulling up on us, man. I know it was a long, a waited time. I ain't realized Tut ain't get up here yet, man, with all the shows. 
we got from the community up here, man. I thought that Tut was up here already. Yo, but I, I, I see Tut in the diner, man. Let's we go, over Jay. there eating breakfast. Talk about <laughs> and it. He got heated, man. He's yeah. like, yo, what's up, Steel? I'm about to put him in the headlock next time yeah. I see him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, what's you know, up, man? Yo. 42, 42 episodes, man. Like, well, on, yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah. Right. I, I'm embarrassed, man. Long, long, long overdue, overdue man. Long, long overdue, overdue, man. Long overdue, man. But we here now. Tuck, we here man. now. Word. Everything happens for a reason. Right, Everything happens for a reason in the right timing. So my guy's up here tonight, man. We're going to talk about it all, man. Word up, man. So, so for our young fan base or fan base who may not know, Coach Tut is, man. Tell everybody who Coach Tut is and where he's from. Man, Coach Tut from 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 the docks where there is no Let's water. Go. Murdoch, you heard? Man. Yeah, um, you know, just you know, just doing God's work. That's all I'm doing, man. Just trying to keep this idle time is the devil's playground. Just trying to keep these kids busy out of the streets. That's it. No question, no question. I'm glad you you started with that part, man, because in the, in the hood, man, Tut to the rack, man. That was, you know, what I'm saying. Ooh. A lot of people came through that, man. Tell everybody how Tut to the Rack started and where you actually started that at. Yeah, I started it back in 19, 1995. So my cousin got killed in 1991. Big shout out to Big Kev, R.M.P. R.I.P. Rest in peace to Big Kev. And, um, you, know, you know, we always played ball. We always played basketball. My uncle, Big Tut, he, um, we used to have a, on 113th in, in, uh, between Colfax and 210th Street, right oh, on the God. street, like we used to make wooden backboards. Like Here we go. My my uncle like uh, made a wooden backboard that came out all wood, uh-huh. of course. Um, but uh, <laughs> 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 but um, that's how it started. You know, it started from going you know block to block. Big shout out to uh, Bashim and my uncle. They, they they used to pave the way. We used to play in the backyards. Um, Right there off, off of Springfield. You know the little buildings over there in back of Springfield? Yes. We used to play in back of that on the um on the bicycle rim. Oh wow. Big shout out to Teddy Portwine and the boys. Teddy wow. Portwine. Oh, Teddy, yeah. Teddy Portwine. Yeah, Teddy, Teddy, we gotta get him up here. We've been talking behind the scenes. We gonna get, Are you gonna get him Teddy, up? Got Trav, Ted up here. As well. Trav, yeah. So it started with like a block to block thing. Like oh. back in the days, way back in the days. So I wanted to take it to another level. So yeah. And I wanted to do it on the street. So I was, let's, let, I want all the fans and everybody to know, I was blacktop before blacktop. Yeah, like a, lot of, a lot of people don't know, this like, why I said his, that. his joint was actually in the street. That's what I'm saying. I wanted to break that down. <laughs> it wasn't, re- it wasn't in the playground. It, it, it eventually ball. graduated to the yeah. playground because I played in the playground once. Let's go. <laughs> but it started in the street, Talk like on it. the street. Talk Absolutely. about that. Talk yeah, about so, that. What was that like? Like I said, I was black top before <laughs> black top. <laughs> so, again, you know, we used, to, we used to play on the street all the time. So, um, we put it together. I put it together. You know, put a couple couple teams from the neighborhood. Like, yeah, that's crazy. I'm from 210th Street. So, 210th two, two Street play, 209th Street play, 211th wow. Street play, 212th Street plays, and like 113th Avenue play. Wow. So, it, 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 grew, it morphed from, from that. We had, you know, we had stars out there. Anthony Mason pulled up. Damn, oh, this is what I'm saying. This yo. was a big thing. So was it was huge. It was huge. Big shout out to my boy Thug. So you're right? tight. So was that half court or full court? Nah, Sorry, full court. Oh, full court. This full court, court was two. It was two rims got, on each side. He got to break that down. I mean, it was some rinky dink <laughs> rims too. <bro>. Yeah. <laughs> big shout out to uh, the OCP Regulanos in the building. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Um. They won. They won my tournament like six times in a row. Oh, FedEx, wow. the Federal Express, Conrad. Shout out to shout out to FedEx, man. Where shout out to the Federal man. Express, and um, so it started with the blocks, and then it morphed. Uh, like Speedy came down. Come on, man. Uh, Diaper Man came down. Uh, Richie, my boy Richie the Scorer, the yo. Big East. Y'all know Big East. Yeah, shout out to Big East. Big brother. East in the building. Yo, it was not. Nah, yo, I can't even name the cast that came yo, down there, man. It was that so many. Crazy. Big shout out to Stymie. Stymie. Shout came out in. to Stymie, man. Stymie won a buzzer beater on us, man. Coach Billy <laughs> Medley was refereeing the game, so you know what that meant. Wow. 40, 40 fouled the crap out of me. <laughs> Billy <laughs> Medley didn't call the call. <laughs> the ball went out of bounds. We had two seconds left because Stymie usually play with me. Yeah. And I said, yo, yo, somebody, j- if Stymie tries to go up, just try to grab him or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Shout so out to You know, Stymie got, you know, out, hop, uh-huh. hops out, yeah, of, it's out, of, out, of, out of the planet. Fact. So two seconds left. Stymie gets the tap. Boom, taps it in. Yeah. I think it was over my boy, Corey. <laughs> I know Corey, we used to call him, I used to call him the World Trade. So uh-huh. a lot of names came from me. 
So um, that's crazy. It, it, it was just it was just something that was unbelievable. It started back in 1995. Or I just the wanted streets. Yeah, I just wanted to do two days. It wound up going from two days, like the weekend. Yeah, yeah. To four weekends, Damn. Oh my, my neighbors got pissed off. That's what I was about to ask you. Yeah, so my I'm neighbors like, got yo, pissed like, off because it, you know it was no trouble, nothing like that. Yeah. So the neighbors got pissed off. So I had to move it to a park. The park. <laughs> 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 so, you know, every weekend, block flooded, yo. barbecue. And you got to cut the streets off. You got to cut R- the streets off. R.I.P. R- R- my mom. She used to be out there with, you know, uh, my pops. R.I.P. R- my dad. Actually, today's my dad's birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to my, my dad. So they used to be out there barbecuing. It was just like a big block party. You know what I mean? Like wow. a big black party. Everybody was just having fun and watching basketball and loving basketball. So, Ted, how... How did you pull that off to, like, block off streets and not have no problems with, like, police or anything like that? Did you oh, I went to the permit. Yeah. Oh, you got the permit. Rent got the permit. The Big shout out to Leroy Comrie in the shout building. Shout out to Leroy Comrie. Leroy, man. he wasn't a senator at the time, but. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's <laughs> he my was just, guy. He just worked in the councilman's office. Wow. <laughs> so, um, you know, I got the permits, you know, to shut the street down. And we just That's crazy. I actually like drew like the lines and That's everything. What, yeah. Like we had everything. It was it was a, it was it was it was Touch Square Garden out there. <laughs> <laughs> it was Touch Square Garden out there. So we had the lines, yeah. everything, three point lines. It was just crazy, man. Like everybody in the hood, the the, the like uh R. R. P on my 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 neighbor, she used to live on the corner, Miss Dawson. She used to say, "Hey, when are you gonna do this again? When are you gonna do this again? When are you gonna do oh, this wow. again?" Because it just brought it everybody. Everybody was just having fun. It brought you know, the yeah. community out. Yeah, brought the right. community out. You know, a nice, peace, peaceful, safe, safe event. Nah, that's dope. That's dope, man. For real, man. So, obviously, you're a pioneer. Like you said, you was black top before anybody to say black top. But you're doing it in the streets for real. What did you most? What do you most pride yourself on? When it comes to bringing kids into the fold, bringing the kids into the fold pretty much is this. Like I said, Idle Time is the devil's playground, so yes, I just want to try to keep these kids as busy as possible, and um, that's that's what it was. Like you know, I just wanted to keep the kids busy, keep them doing something positive, mm-hmm. because like I said, if they have Idle Time, they don't even have to be looking for trouble. Trouble's gonna find them. That's a fact. That's Yo, a t- fact. tell them how how you was doing it in COVID, the COVID times, man. Oh yeah, so you know, I was blessed. I was blessed, and in, 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 you know, during the COVID, uh-huh. I said, you know, as soon as they put the rims back on the court, I went, I went back to one of the other courts that I, I did touch to the rack at. Nah, we getting, we getting too far ahead. We getting too far ahead. Oh, I jumped it. Let him finish it though. We gonna bring it back. We gonna reel it back. Let him finish it. Skipping back years. Yeah, Jay jumped in 2020. Jay jumped in 2020. Our boy Tap been outside for a long time. This was what I'm saying. We got to get back to the court. Let's 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 get back to the house like yeah. these kids was in the house you know n- not being social and everything like that so i you know i went to one of the parks that i that i, I went to was uh ps 147 shout out to so, 147 yeah ps big 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 shout out to ps 147 i went to ps 147 wow. so um you know i brought the you know the rims back came back on the court i start calling around you know, yo i'm just going to call it old school park games rec games yeah Right, yeah. just get out of court and play. Yeah. Bring your five and let's rock. Wow! So you know, big shout out to my boy Cheese. You know, Cheese was there. You know, from day one mm-hmm. with me went in 2020. Okay. You know, is, is this the park or this when you got the church? This was the park first. Okay. Okay. So this you. is how it started. So you know, we went to the park. It morphed into whew, like 11, 12, 15, 20 teams start yeah. coming down like yeah, every yeah, week, yeah. every weekend. That's a lot. And then I was blessed enough to get um. The church on um 115th Road. Uh, shout out to Majority Baptist. Majority Baptist. Big shout yeah. out to Majority Baptist Word. Church. You know, I, got, I was able to get the church. It wasn't for free. But I got I, I, Yeah, because I was hitting <laughs> Tut up like, yo, Tut, yo, got to get a game in It wasn't free. It Word. wasn't for free. Yeah, I know uh, that. So, uh, you know, we was able to get these kids. We played about 150 games. Yeah, that was crazy. You know, Damn. keeping kids, you know, in a 
positive environment. Facts. I had the big spray machine looking like Ghostbusters out <laughs> there making sure the kids were <laughs> spraying yeah. disinfected. That's a fact. And um, big shout out to my boy. He's not. He's no longer here. My boy, my best friend, Ty, Tito. Rest Tito, peace, big shout out. R.I.P. Tito. Tito. Um, he was out there, you know, ch- taking temperatures and everything like that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man. But wow. It was, wow. You know, because I always felt like, hey, if, if the kids are in a positive environment for an hour or two, yeah. they can't be outside getting into no trouble. That's a fact. That's so, a uh, fact. Yeah, we did. I'm telling you, we did. You know, we, we had games like St. Francis Prep was there. Yeah, no, nah, I was, I was, was there. I Big shout out to my boy Clyde at Severian. Yeah. Um, you know, Cardozo was there. Yeah. Uh, uh, the van was there. Van Buren was there. Big yeah. shout out to my boy Dion. Shout out to Coach D. Yeah, <laughs> Coach D, <laughs> you yes, For sure. Sir. Congratulations, man. I'm really proud of you with the that. The new MVP, bro. Yeah. MVP. Yeah, I, I was hoping that you took that job, man. I was I mean, I was headlocking cheese up and saying, yo, Dion, I better take that job. I told him. I told him. <laughs> For real, bro. The Don't carry, let that get away, man. man. Don't let that get away. Take your job, man. Word. Don't let that get away. So, um, you know, we had a lot of teams out there, man. We just played from, like, ages, like, we was going from, like, age 10 and up all the way up to up into high school so that's a fact i was just blessed enough to get the gym three yeah. no nah, i mean bring it back because jay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no nah, i mean whole decade <laughs> yeah we we, we, we was at we was at the tech to the rack joint and what you do in the community i just want to salute you and give you a fly because you you're one of the guys that i looked up that i look up to and I still look up to to this day um because Similar to what you've been doing is the same shit that I'm trying to do and I've been doing. Um, and that's just like trying to teach these kids the principles of life skills and values of using basketball as a tool to help you grow and mature and, you know, just keep them out of trouble, man. So it's like when I see people like you, it inspires me to just keep going because I know I'm doing something right. You know what I mean? Like you've been blessed to be here and also have your hands in a lot of different other things whereas you were in the fashion you were in it in myself i was in the music i was in the basketball Mm -hmm. i was in a lot of different things man so it's like people like you i look at it like you know i mean tut is doing the right thing so when kids say that i'm like tut is over there giving his free time to help kids and that's the only reason that i still do it because if i could just pull one kid to go in the right direction and make it i did my job and i put a post up a few days ago was like I, I had to explain why like somebody hit me like yo why are you coaching you should be doing this like it's mad money in this and uh, man I'm not trying to steal these parents money to train kids on some hocus pocus shit where like I'm gonna take you I'm gonna make your kid an NBA player mm. this is basically what the person was hit me up saying that yeah. why are you coaching you should be training it's money in this I'm like that's not my passion because it's too many guys in here doing this for the monetary gain of it my thing is I want to help a kid get to wherever his final destination is through me being genuine. And anything after that is just a blessing for me. So guys like Tut is like I'm cut from the same cloth and because I, I was able to witness him, Billy Medley. Shout out to Day Day. Shout out to, shout out you know to what I mean, yeah, Abadab Kelly, Pete Edwards. These guys shout that I've seen Pete. in my community that Bring was just game, pouring, back, pouring back into the community and guys like him they birth guys like me facts so that's why i'm still here doing what i'm doing i'm glad that he's here tonight nah, that's kicking fact, it with man. us no nah, respect happy, respect man. respect I'm, get tight here, man. Respect. Real, man. I'm gonna tell you that's a lot of money in bad basketball though yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely <laughs> absolutely not lying. absolutely not lying. absolutely Definitely my pops always told me don't chase no money yeah facts. that's facts nah, you know but what i'm saying you gonna you gonna you gonna walk you gonna chase it down the wrong block that's a fact 100 percent Wow. Yeah, I'm a volunteer assistant coach at Springfield Gardens High School. Big big shout out to the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just you, you got to pay it forward. You know, I was blessed enough, you know, be president of the Kooji, president of Fubu. Let's go. We going to you know about Kooji, all that. Kooji down to the socks. Let's you know go. what I mean? I mean but um, so um, you know, you got to pay it forward. But but know? even talk about your basketball background because that's you, what I wanted. We to put get a to photo now. up the other day with you in uniform. Talk about it at Springfield with that team a lot of people wouldn't know that you know what i'm yeah, saying like yeah, a lot fact. of kids didn't know that so it's like yeah. like a lot of kids they don't know i play basketball <laughs> you know yeah. what i'm saying i used to call so, you neon dion right <laughs> <laughs> so, so speed is what you need so man. what i'm saying is like 
fill us <laughs> fill us in on your you know when did you start playing when did you fall in love with the game what inspired you Let's go. who did you look up to we know you played at Springfield Gardens High School and that's one of the reasons why you're back at that high school pouring mm-hmm. back into those same kids so talk to us about that like what what where did you develop your basketball Jones is what I like to call it okay so like I said like big shout out to my uncle my uncle yeah. you know put the ball in my hand at first like, you know, playing against, like, Teddy Portwine and all those guys, Dave Edwards, yeah. R.I.P. Dave Ooh, Edwards. What's a piece, Dave? Um, but that's when I got the love of the game, like, you know, playing, you know, playing on the, sh- like I said, we used to play in the, in the, in the, in, in the back of a, not even a park, like, <laughs> mm-hmm. in the back of a house. Where Whatever, the, it was a fucking hoop. hoop. No, yeah. but it wasn't a hoop. It was a uh, bicycle rim. Yeah, bicycle. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. It was a bicycle that's rim, crazy. bro. crazy. Bicycle rim going hard. Yeah. Pause. Um, but, yeah, so that's when I, you know, I got the love for the game and, you know, played at Springfield Gardens High School. You know, um, Larry Cave is on. I see Larry Cave is on my Shout lap. Larry Cave. Larry Cave, Cage, Cage Lab. You know, we used the freshmen playing at Springfield Gardens High School. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I just... I just love the game. I love the game. It's my passion. Mm-hmm. You know, I work for you know a company, but basketball is my passion. That's what so it is. you know, if I, you know, and you know, my wife is you know watching right now. You know, she's probably you know she's pissed off because you know I love the basketball, but you know, oh, we all we we, we all can take takes, takes a lot of we time. We all can family. attest to that, man. We all can attest to that. Man. Yeah. See, but I got four boys though, so. <laughs> yes, yes. So I got four boys, so yes. I got an excuse, you know yes, what I mean? So absolutely. I, and I got, you know, my big shout outs to my boys, man. AJ. Big shout out to, all of big the shout out to uh, Amir, Jew, Jew America. Mm-hmm. He's a uh, big time streamer, game streamer. Big shout out to Amari. He's about to graduate, Forest Hills High School. Let's and big go. shout out to my youngest one, um, Aaron, the Bull, aka King Tut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. So. He might be, he might be, you know. If I'm not like mistaken, that. maybe what three out of the four all hooped. Yeah, no, four out, hooped? Four. Oh, oh, yeah, all three all out of four. Oh, three out of three. Yeah. Three out of three um, balled in high school. Yes. That's what. That's what I was. Yeah. Aaron's only in eighth grade. Yeah, and that's that's, that's what I, that's, that's what, what I, I meant. We'll get so, to next yeah. too, man. Being that <laughs> you're the head of a basketball family, man. How much pressure did you apply on your children Ooh. to follow in your path? Ooh. So you know, again, I coach guys that are around you know Dion's age. Yes. You know, um, but. When I got my own son, big shout out to Lowdown Dirty Shane, Shane Gasson, uh, uh, Mel Robinson, shout out to Shane. Royal Royal Ivy. Shout out to Royal. You know, I coached all these guys. Um, you know, a lot a lot more than that. But um my when I got my son, yeah, I was like, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, was yes. Like, it was like a mold of clay. Woo! Yeah. Man. But I, you know, and I and, and I worked him hard. Like I mean, worked him hard because I was trying to live my life through him. A lot of a lot of us. And do. that does not work because Talk again, my it. son, you know, he, he played ball, he excelled. Um, you know, we went to Forest Hills High School, Queens Championship. But you know, he had a chance because you know he went to Maryland Eastern Shore, and one thing that he I was was a pure point guard. Like he couldn't shoot a lick. Yeah. He was straight Rondo. Yeah. But yeah. he can run a team. He wasn't tall, but he, you know he was fast. Yeah. He see he saw plays before they developed. Like he was a pure point guard. Yeah. So you know, and that was me, pure point guard. Yeah. But you can lead a horse to water, but you can't yeah, make him drink unless they yeah. thirsty. Yeah. So he played real hard. Played real hard, and he had a chance to be a preferred walk on. Cause we had one of my players, Kevin Mays. Big shout out to Peanut. He went to Maryland Eastern Shore. He was going. He was going to Maryland Eastern Shore. So you know how I go. Mm-hmm. Yo, you want him? You got to take him. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so he would have been a preferred walk on, and he would have played because yeah. he was a pure point guard. They needed a point point guard, and I know where my son was. Yeah. But you know, Peanut. Something happened where Peanut had to come like six months later, mm-hmm. and without Peanut there, you know, pushing him, he was like, "Man, Dad, the hell with this." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he came on. He was on the dean list. In, in in college, so you know it's always books before ball. It's always That's books before ball. That's My wife might not yeah. think that. My wife might think is I I I think it's ball before books, but yeah. it's definitely books books before ball for sure. Yeah. But um yeah. So and then when he told me he didn't want to play no more, crush me. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> crush me, but you know. Yeah. So that's when my other three, you know, I had to pull back. You learned. 
I learned from, the from first my, one. I learned from my, my first one. Yeah. I always tell them that, yo, you were my you was our first one. So, you know, we were you know going going learning on we, we, we was all winging this. We mm -hmm. was all you know what I mean working on the fly and um similar to all the shit I went through is that's why my little brother Cliff was able to excel and Your pops is on you know what I mean because he, all the mistakes my dad made with me, he didn't make them with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He allowed him to grow through. He allowed him to face some adversity and try to get through that adversity. So, mm -hmm. like, I, I've seen all of his sons play. So that's why I wanted to um, speak on that topic. And all yeah, of them absolutely. were all of them were, were good. Yeah. You know what I mean? All of them were good. And you could tell that they came from a solid foundation of how to play the game the right way. Because my thing is... It's not really about pushing these kids to try to be professional players. It's about pushing them away from the negative shit that's in our community. No so question. if you're constantly hooping, you're in practice, mm -hmm. you're in workouts, you're doing this, it's taking up more time from you being out doing some negative shit or following the crowd. Absolutely. You get what I'm saying? So that's really my main focus yeah. with being in this space, that's the basketball fact. space. Absolutely. And I know guys like Tut. That's the reason why he does it. And that's, that's why, you know what I'm saying, I look up to guys like that's him. That's a fact. That's respect, bro. That's respect. I want a big shout out to my EP family. EP Basketball, Coach that's Map, good. Coach John, Alexa Shout out to Coach Map, man. I got to, you know, give a shout out to the powerful uh, personal injury <laughs> <laughs> personal injury uh, attorneys. EP Law, you, you guys go. need some lawyers, let me know. Let's like, go. you know, big shout out to my EP family. They, they you know, Coach Map. They, you know, they doing doing a lot of things, man. We we during the pandemic, we we partnered up. Like I merged my team with EP's team, yeah. and um, so we got a 14 u team right now. And you know, we 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 went made hoops next weekend. So okay, yeah. Okay. So it's, it's it's going down. It's going down. Oh, man. <laughs> so I guess, I guess this next question is for like the both of you. So what are some of your biggest obstacles that you guys both face when dealing with like? Youth sports in general, but how do you deal with the overzealous parents that want their kids to play more? <laughs> or you know, my little brother should be playing, or my cousin should be playing. How do y'all deal with that and put that in this pocket to where you don't lose your cool over somebody whose son may not be good? <laughs> <laughs> let me let me answer this one first, Dion. I got go. you. Go I tell you know again. I you know the percentages. I explained it to all the parents before the game, uh, before you know, I started coaching or teaching them. I said, in the last 50 years, right, of uh -huh. in the NBA, uh -huh. there's only been like 45, 5,000 players, right? Less than that. Less I'm just than saying, that. 45, I'm just saying 4,500. Under 5K. It's under, like 40. under 5K, right? Yes. So I tell, I tell the kids this. I say, hey, say players like LeBron James, 20 years plus, you know, 15 years plus. So it's only 450 players in the league, right? Yeah. So out of the, so LeBron James, 20 years, 50, all the guys from like 20 years or more, yeah. say say it's about 100, 100 guys, right? Yeah. And then all the guys, it's like 10 years and down, that's another 100 guys. So that brings it down to 250, right? Damn. And then you have the draft, NBA draft, every single year, first round, 30 players. Yes. Guaranteed. The second round, another 30 players. Guaranteed. Not that non guaranteed. Non guaranteed. Non guaranteed. Non -guaranteed. Sixty fact. guys per year. So we're gonna we're gonna roll year. it up to a hundred, right? Yeah. So now you're down to hundred and fifty players. Now you have a million mean means of people trying to make a hundred and fifty spots per year. <laughs> Damn. Now when you look at it, it's so crazy. That's, that's like getting hit by lightning twice. <laughs> but I do real talk though, but you know, I have coached some players that made it to the pinnacle. That's a fact. You know, again, big shout out Royal Ivy, yes, sir. Maurice Harkless. Yes. Um, big shout, shout out, out to Hawk, um, it's, it's a few more. Yeah, Shane. Shane. Shout out my guy. Yeah, Shane, Shane made yep. it. Shane made it. Yep. Um, uh, big shout out Jay High is on here. J Jay High, J -I. J -I. J -I, aka the Fly. Oh, God. Yeah, Word. he's on. The, he's on the live. You know, what I mean, he's coaching with us at EP. But to answer your question, is this? After I tell the parents, uh, parents and the kids that I'm like, hey. There's way more jobs in the NBA than just being a player. Talk about it. So when it, you ask a kid, Dion, hey, you know, how far do you want to go? I want to make it to the NBA. I say, okay, you want to make it to the NBA? I'm going to try to get you to the NBA, but it may not be being a player. Whew. You could possibly be an NBA lawyer. That, there we go. NBA doctor. There we go. 
accountant. There we go. Physical therapist. Stats. Referee. Cameraman. Facts. Right? Yeah. So, a owner. That's a... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, after I explain all of that to the parents and everything like that, then, you know, you have these delusional parents, of course. <laughs> Definitely have delusional parents. But one thing me coaching high school, one thing me coaching high school, I tell people right away, this ain't CYO. Yes. This ain't you pay, you play. <laughs> <laughs> this is a JV team or a varsity team. Yep. If your kid's on the team, that don't mean he's going to play. That's a it's not equal opportunity. Nah, nah Tuck comes my little brother. He wasn't getting that much burn either. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yo, yo, still, yo. yo so, 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 I let him know, man. I was like, yo, I can't tell him nothing. Yeah, and all my players know you got to do your sets. <laughs> you got to do your sets. If you ask any player that played for me, you have to do your sets. Yeah. Your sets consist of push ups, calf raises, squats. Dips, lunges, oh, hip stretches God. with the hand gripper. Wow. Start up 10 sets of 10. That's 100 of each category every single night. That's not happening. But <laughs> it, I'm just saying. <laughs> they falling out. Some kids are going to, you know, kids just got to be a straight monster to do it every single night. That. But you if they do it, if they do it two or three days out of the week, yeah. they will see the difference of them being stronger yeah. they don't believe Faster, it though yeah. jumping higher yeah and you know what that exudes confidence yeah Thanks. but they don't believe that like what you're preaching is from the old school the old school the way that ab kelly taught me <laughs> and many uh, countless others where we had to run so if he said meet at roy wilkins at 5 30 we get to roy wilkins at 5 30 we gotta run till 6 15 <laughs> so we run we get there at 5 30 get dressed change uh, you we run till six fifteen, and then we do some drills and then we run open play and all that but a lot of guys started dropping off because they, they didn't want to do uh -huh. that and i always say this like a lot of people didn't understand and uh shout out to my guy a game and uh shout out to my guy are we live they want they want me to come on a platform to have a conversation about my backstory but a lot of people didn't understand i'm gonna share this now but i was gonna share it on there is that when I was younger, what kind of separated me from the kids my age is that I had a trainer. And yes. now, if I said mm. today to kids I had a trainer, they're going to think I had a guy that took me in the gym and showed me moves and did it. No, I had a trainer. I had a guy from my hood named Kev that was a semi-pro boxer. Shout out to Kev. That, R.I.P. Kev. And Ab, too. That, mm -hmm. he was training me physically. So, he was running me two miles a day. And then he was had me jumping rope. He had me throwing a medicine ball back and forth. He was dropping a medicine ball on my stomach. This is all at 12 years old. 12 years old, facts. He had me doing 250 push-ups. So when I when I played my age group in CYO, Dominated. these white parents were looking at me like I was a robot. They were like, how the <laughs> fuck is this kid faster, stronger he definitely was than, fast. Every, than every facts. all the other kids? So it kind of... And I never told nobody this, so nobody really knew what my pops was doing with me. Yeah. <laughs> so when they used to see me, they're like, "How the fuck is he this fast? How the fuck yeah. is he this strong?" He's bro. little, he's little, C but Big C. he's strong. But it was the physical part that Kev was instilling in me. It wasn't. It didn't have nothing to do with basketball skills. Like yeah. Kev never told me how to shoot a jumper, yeah. dribble, nothing. He just had me on the track. He had me jumping rope. He had me doing dips. He had me doing pull-ups. Mm -hmm. He had me doing all that shit at 12 years old. So mm -hmm. when I go back to play my age group, it was dominance. Yeah. So Sound that's like what your sets to me. That's right. what that's right. what I'm saying. That's what I'm right. saying. So when I try to tell these kids this now in 2024, like yo, y'all need y like bro, you need to be doing 500 push-ups a night. Sure. They looking at me like I'm crazy. When I'm like yo, I was doing that when I was 11. Like, you telling me you can't do that and you 16, 17 yeah. years old? Yeah. That's going to separate you from the pack because 100%. most are not doing that. So you get what I'm saying? So, when he says that, it kind of rung a bell because I'm like, damn, they don't even know that. That's some old school shit. So, <laughs> you tell a kid that, yo, I need 500 push-ups a night. I need you to run two miles a day. And I need you to jump some rope and do some dips. They're looking at you like, I'm not doing that shit. Yeah. Like, I don't, and, I don't and have I break time it, to do that and shit. And I break it easy to the kids. I said, yo, you, can you do 10 push-ups? They said, yeah. Can you do 10 calf raises? Yeah. 
Can you do 10 dips? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Do that. 10 more, you know, do it one time, then do it nine more times, and now you add 100 of each category. You're going, your body's going to change, and we're going to You're going to see the we're results. Gonna see the results. The results exactly. are going to show. I tell kids all that. Yeah. Like, whatever you watching on TV, whatever you're doing, and that, that was a rule in my house. If we watching a basketball game, every time it's a commercial, I need 25. So all wow. my cousins and used to spend the night and all that, they knew that if they spent the night, they had to do whatever I had to do. So they stopped wanting to spend the night. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you spend the night, when a commercial come on, whatever we watch it, we need them 25. And they, didn't, they wasn't with it. So a lot of people really didn't know yeah. what my pops was doing, but that's what we were doing. It didn't have nothing to do with him showing me Euro steps and mm -hmm. dribbling drills and all that shit. The talent was there. It was the physic, the physical part of the, the endurance that yeah. a lot of people undermine and don't really take that yeah. into mm -hmm. account. So those create monsters. The guys that's willing to do that yeah. is the guys that are going to be monsters. So yeah. a lot of these kids don't really understand that. And what he said, it just brought back memories because if you get a kid in this day and age to do that shit, yeah. he going to go far. That's a fact. A hundred percent. Night, you know, 85% of the game is mental. You know, Facts. You know oh, the 15%. Is, uh Oh, we got callers oh, we coming got through. Caller. We got a caller. <laughs> no off season, no bars and who's radio. Who's this? Yo, this is Tony Rich, man. What's turn, good? Turn your, turn your radio down, Tony. Turn your radio down. That's Richburg? Yeah, that's Richburg. Tony, what up? Yo, Tony, you can hear me? You can yep. hear me? Yes, we sir. hear you. Turn, turn, turn your Yo, music man. down, man. Tony, yeah, turn the radio down. down. Turn the radio, turn radio down. down in the background. <laughs> turn, 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 turn it down or mute it. <laughs> one or the other. You got to get to the me now? Yeah, Look. we hear you Yes, now. sir. Turn it down or mute it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. He's still in his head down. That's better? Yeah, you yeah, turn Tone it down. Tone saw he on a 3G Yo, phone on now. I'm blessed, man. You? That's my dude right there, right there, <laughs> man. Yo. Yo, yeah, so turn it down. Turn, turn the music, music turn it, off turn, or turn it down. Turn the tablet down. I'm on the 3G right, 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 right now. So we we going to have to hang up, so. <laughs> Word. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> turn it down, man. I got the man. tablet and the phone going. <laughs> turn turn <laughs> the tablet <laughs> down. Turn, turn the, the tablet, tablet down, Tom. Yeah, we got All right, you hear me now? Yes, yeah. sir. All right, yo. What's good? Yo, yo, let me tell you about this dude, man. This guy is... You want to know, yo, this guy had tournaments. Even in my heyday when I was killing everybody out there. <laughs> Here we go. He, <laughs> Hold on, Tom. I'm going to cut you off, man. But Luca got 72 back. right now. Luca 72, 72 points? Luca got 72 right now, man. Oh, I just had to interrupt you. Wow. What's up, Femo? You hear me? Yes, yes. sir. Oh, wow. <laughs> when you had the tournament right there on Colfax, right on the block. That's right, baby. Yes, sir. You, you know what I mean? You... If you if you go too far in the corner, shoot that three, you might push your ankle on the curve. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that was on the side, Tone. That was on the side, Tone. That was the out of bounds. I made sure I, I marked it in yellow so everybody can see it. <laughs> Yo, man, you did it all, man. For the kids, everything, man. You know what I mean? I appreciate you and what you do. Even though you be spending your time on our side of town, up, up in the dirty diner, <laughs> <laughs> I be checking you up in there. <laughs> yeah, we check. Big shout out to my boy Tone, man, driving them school buses, <laughs> making sure those kids get to school shout safe. Out man. Tone, man. Exactly, Thank you for your services, exactly, famo. Man. Exactly, man. But I see what you're doing. You've been doing it for a minute, man. I had to call in. I saw you, man. Man, First up? coming in, man. Yeah. I had to holler at Tut, man. Yeah, this guy, like, yo. This, <laughs> you know, you know, I you know, remember the days of the Springfield days and, and all that, you know? <laughs> yes, sir. We played, you know, Alvin Rich and all that stuff. You, you, wait a minute. You, Big shout out to Alvin Rich, Marvin wow. Crumpton, Icebox. Marvin Crumpton. Wow. 1987 championship team. Big shout out to my boys. Right. Shout out to those guys. <laughs> they, you know, they, they was the only one that, that held me back from winning what I need to do, you know? <laughs> they, you know? 
No coach doubt. Coach, Tyler. What was the coach name again? What's his name? Ken Fiedler. Ken Fiedler. Big Fiedler, shout to Ken Fiedler. Fiedler. R.I.P. Ken Fiedler. Yeah, man. I, I come up in Springfield. I come up in Springfield to throw that boxing one on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Tone was a problem, though. Crump, running all over the place. Baseline. Man. Play for baseline. You know tone, tone, tone. tone. Who you who you play for? <laughs> tone, who you play for? Who you play for? Tone. I was at Bayside, man. Bayside. Tone was tough. Bayside. I was at Bayside. Yeah, good old days, but you know, because you know, we was in the league with he was the Bill um, Crest. You know, that the BJ Carter's over there. Um, oh, yeah. BJ told me he bust your ass, though. Yo, Tone. He told me he your ass. BJ told me he bust your ass. In the sniff tournament. Who, who's that? Who bust my ass? BJ, BJ said Carter. he bust your ass. <laughs> BJ, BJ Carter bust a lot of motherfuckers. Yeah, B, <laughs> BJ, BJ Carter said <laughs> he bust your hey, ass. Hey, I take credit for that, and I was the old dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, BJ Carter's you know, tough, bro. You know what? You know, um... Shout out to my man Woody Wood. You know what Ed I mean? I was my backcourt partner. I oh, Woody. Rest in peace, Ed Wood. You know what I mean? And we Luke met up in college. And, yeah, Luke got 73. And he, he wound up telling me, like, yo, BJ used to always come over his crib all the time. BJ was he was nice. like, yo, yeah, man, who's this dark skin? I ran up on BJ lefty, as a man. youngie. This Wrong lefty move. used to, he, he's out there killing, man. I don't have no clue for this guy. Talking about speed is what you word. need, bro. The world out was tough. You know? He just hit you at double cross. Hey. Bang, 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 bang. And then MIDI. His yeah. MIDI was whew. crazy. Yeah, that's Cash crazy. money. Who's that? BJ, BJ Armstrong, his MIDI, his mid range. His mid range. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I caught some of them guys when they was at yeah. the end. Let me tell you, man. Like right. BJ, Dave. Listen, man. I caught them <laughs> when they was at the <laughs> end. I, and I was in a lot of problems. Yeah, I caught them at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I only it. played against Boo once. You played against Boo Harvey. The Wizard, yeah, big yeah, shot yeah, to the, the Wizard. Wizard. The Wizard had the Wizard had a fifty ball. Hall of, yeah. Hall of Fame. Yeah. I, I was in ninth grade, yeah. so it didn't yeah. count. St. John's Hall of Fame. Big <laughs> shout out to Boo Harvey. Like yeah, Boo Harvey. Oh man, man. St. John's. yes sir. Hall of uh, Fame, St. John's. Yeah, referee now too, man. For yeah, yeah, shout out, but we got We gonna get Boo up here. Boo is my guy, man. So we got a limited amount of time, man. We want to finish up this. I no doubt. I just wanted to holler at you, cut man. One love, man. Much love, bro. Doubt. Much no, love. All, right, all, so the, all the night listeners night. and viewers, man, log in on New York City Point Guards on Instagram. Follow the page, support the page, share the content, whatever. New York City Point Guards on our IG. The so, real point guards. Yes, indeed. So we got to get to this part now, man. You know what I mean? We talked about the basketball accolades and everything. No, no, but we moving on to the fashion? Of course. Okay, so before we move on to that, I need that. Dude, you're still in my thunder, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> before we move on to the fashion, I because I put up a post the other day, and I got I got a little bit of pushback. I got some people that, oh, I want to know. And it's, oh, it's, it's all inspirational. It's all about your era. I want your Mount Rushmore. Ah, man, we I, gonna do that. No, 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 no. I want it Wait, now, bro. All right, all right. I want his Mount Point Guard Roush, Roush, Mount Rushmore from Queens. Mm. And, and before you do that, mine's is for me personally. Go ahead. Dave Edwards. No dispute with that. Shaheen Holloway. Mm. No dispute with that. Kenny Anderson. No dispute with that. Mm. And it was like a pick em between Rafa and Boo. And I went skip, so those are my four. Oof. My Mount Rushmore from the from the town. Those my Shaheen four. Yeah, yeah. Those my four. You can get I one mean, more. You can get one more. No, no. We doing four. four? If, <laughs> if it was five, if it was five, <laughs> I don't want to yeah. answer that. If it was five, it's definitely Boo. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. those are those, like we we could do five. So I got Shaheen, uh -huh. Dave Edwards, uh -huh. Kenny Anderson, Rafa Austin, uh -huh. and. Greg Boo Harvey. Yes, those are those. That's my. Those are the guys that inspired me. That made me want to play ball. Outside of Isaiah Thomas, uh -huh. those are the guys. And having a relationship with each and every one of them also helped me get through my basketball journey and want to be a basketball player. So that's my mount from the hood. Yes, indeed. Mm. So yeah, I want to hear. I want to hear. And Teddy was like almost. He was right there. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. Like a lot of people don't know, and I hate it, but I tell Ted, if they ain't see it, they don't know, so you can't blame them. Like, mm -hmm. Ted was a bad motherfucker, Ted. Oof. And um, his brother. BJ. Trevor was a bad too. motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. True. Mm, because true when, when I started right. playing, my pops took me to all the hitters. Yeah. <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? He took me. This is true. Yeah. You gotta watch him. This is Dave. You gotta watch him. This is yeah. so. Those are the guys that's right there. So you gotta be there to know that. But I want to hear Tut because Tut is older than me, he and Tut seen it, and he played against those guys. Yes, so sir. I want to hear his mount from Woo! Queens. Let's go. Let's all go. Right, point all right. Point guards. All right. So you know, of course, you know it's in no order. No order. No order. But definitely Kenny Anderson. K-A Big shout to sure. Chips. Um. I was from the north side. Let's go. Actually, it's not even the north side and south side. Everything is south Everything Queens. Everything is south Queens. That's a fact. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's a so fact. I was from the, the, they just so the north I, I lived side. in I lived in Mur- Murdoch and I also lived in Rochdale. Let's go. So I want a big shout out to my boy Kenny Kenny Patterson. Kenny Patterson. Yes. Because um, heard big, a lot about Kenny Patterson. Kenny, KP. Big shout. Big shout out to KP. KP inspired a lot of guards. He inspired nice. us. You know, from Rochdale. So big shout out to KP. I got to put him up there. Of course, Boo Harvey. Um, I got to put, you know, skipping them. They, they was always younger than us. So I'm going to let, let the Let's younger, go. let younger, you know, the younger Add cast up. pick the younger No, no, okay. Yeah. So we got, we got, <laughs> we go. got, we got KA. Uh-huh. We got Boo. Uh-huh. We got KP. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You got two more. All right. Um, mm. Well, I, I, you know, Dave is around my era too. You know, Dave he's a little younger than me, so I definitely got to go. Dave Edwards. Dave Edwards got one more. Yeah, Dave Edwards is four. I don't want to leave nobody out, bro. Uh, hey man, so many, <laughs> bro. The pressure. <laughs> it's a lot of the pressure. pressure up here. Point guards. <laughs> that was smoking up here. Point guard. Um, man, you know, you know, Mark Jackson, baby. Got to go. Mark action Jackson, Jackson, baby. Yeah, there you gotta go. Got to go. Action Jackson, Jackson, Jackson baby. Go wrong with that. Got to go. go action Jackson. Jackson. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> That's a solid five right there. You can't go. Can't go. Can't go wrong with that, man. Like I said, I think everybody will have a different list. I think everybody will have a different list, man. But I mean, I just wanted to, you know, put that in the universe because I put that up, and people was like, "How you don't have?" I said, "Listen, that's me personally." You know what I'm saying? Like Wesley Nelson is my old shoe. Black gold. Sometimes I feel. You know what I'm saying? Wesley Nelson is the one that inspired me to want to play basketball. I follow Wes to where I thought I was going to be a baseball player because I follow him that much that he did that (laughs) also. But a lot of people don't know. Like that's my OG in my bridge to basketball. Big shout out to Little Wes too. He's at EP. He's at EP Law too. Yeah. Big shout out to Lil West. Again, it's we we it's just so many guys, and I just think that if you ask somebody that, they'll you'll you'll get five different guys every time. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Steve Frazier. Shout out to my uh, shout out to my guy Jason Gilliam Alexander. Shout out to my guy. Shout out to my guy QP Quincy Paul Ruddick. QP. Um, it's just so many guys, man. So I mean, it's about where you was at in that time. The reason that those guys are my guys is because they inspired me. Oh, I was able to see them throughout, so I just wanted to know who Tut said, and Tut had a solid five. Now, that's a fact. That's a fact. So let's go. We got about twenty something minutes left in the show, man. We gonna end it off right, man. So we spoke about all your basketball accolades and everything that you've done in the community, iconic stuff. But let's talk about the fashion world now. Cause that that Kooji suit is fire, down to the socks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you also had a part in Fubu, man. So. How instrumental were you in both of those brands? You know, big shout out to my Fubu family, of course. You know, my boy Damon John, Carl, Carl Brown, John. Keith Perrin, Jay Alexander Martin, and all the rest of my Fubu family. But mm-hmm. Fubu, man, it was you know we were all young. You know, what I mean, we was all young, and Fubu was more than just a clothing line. It was a, it was a movement. Absolutely, it For was a us, movement. It was a movement. But what we what we was trying to put. You know, show people that how strong the black dollar actually was. You know what I mean? So Timberland, you know, said they didn't want us to wear, wear their stuff. stuff. All right, yeah. we're gonna show you. Facts. We're gonna show you. All right, we're gonna show you how strong this black dollar Facts. is. So it was, it was just a movement. It was just crazy, man. It was like they built a whole side of the in Vegas in the convention center, the Magic Convention Center. Yeah. They built a whole side because of us, because wow. of because of us, uh, brands like you know Fubu, yeah. uh, Fat Farm, Sean John, Rockaway, yeah. Carcanai. Yes, and it was just a, it, the movement was just unbelievable, man. So, you know, we actually you know about to do some special things with Fubu again, and you know I want to kind of get you guys come on play man. on this. Come on. So my play on how to you know revive Fubu or bring Fubu back. I'm I'm saying that we should do it like this. We should have a like a young artist 
Say less. Whoever, whoever, a young artist. Say less, Todd. A young athlete, fashionable as- athlete, a, a, a streamer, a young DJ, an artist. We could do all that. And that's what I think. That's how I think. A young we a, can, a podcaster. A young all podcaster. That. So that's how I think we can make that wave go to a whole new generation. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's something that you know we we probably gonna be looking Listen, at. Man, you already know we 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 on that. We support you, man. We, but, whatever but you want to. Your your inclusion into that. Um. Of course, you you've known the owners for years. Y'all grew up together. What did they see in you to say that Tut needs to be a part of this, or we need to include him in this, and he needs to have a role in this, or say so, or whether you were the marketing manager or. Whatever role you played, what did they see in you and how did that, how was that presented to you? Okay, so Dam- me and Damon John is like best friends. So we used to work at Red Lobster together back <laughs> oh, in the Oh, that's days. crazy. Uh, we used to work at Red Lobster together and Damon was always a hustler. Like Shark Tank. He was definitely, you know, selling salt and pepper shakers. Out <laughs> <of the restaurant. laughs> but um, so me and him worked at Red Lobster and, you know, this is a story that, you know, a lot of people don't know. So... When, when I was working at a lobster, I fell, you know, slip and fall. And I was getting a, you know, nice size settlement. Yeah. So right before, like a week or so before my settlement, they got the back end with Samsung. Oh. So I was giving my whole settlement check to Damon. Wow. To Fubu. So I would have been like a partner, but so, so you actually you oh. were a silent partner in no no nice. I would have been would have I would have been a silent gave it, partner, but Samsung came in. Oh, Samsung okay, came okay. in and he didn't need the bread. Oh, so that. he didn't need it, so he gave yeah. it back to you. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't. No, nah, I didn't even get to give it to him. I didn't even get it, it yet. Oh, okay, okay. But got you know, you know, God works in mysterious ways. Yeah. So he, you know, he, they got put on and he put me on. You but know, the fact that he knew you was gonna give it to him is probably it probably held some weight. Facts. Yeah, but, but before that's his man, regardless. yeah, but that's my yeah, that's the whole. No, I know that, but I'm saying if you know I'm about to give you, I'm about to give you whatever I'm about to get. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, <laughs> it, it gotta add some weight to it. It's oh, like yeah, yo, it definitely has some weight. This guy's really my guy. He was about to give me. He could have just took that and kept it moving. That's a fact. Because when you get a settlement from a corporation, you like, I'm about to flip this. I'm about to go. Yeah. But if he was willing to say. Nah, go ahead. I believe in that. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, mean, I don't know. From the outside looking, I think that probably held some weight. I did. Yeah, it probably I did. did not. But we were just, we, we just, you know, me and him is pretty much, you know, like very similar. We, we, we're only kids. You know what I mean? We was raised by our moms. Big shout out, you know, again, my dad. My dad was in the picture, so I don't want to. It's like he's the Debbie bit dad and anything like that. But um. We was, you know, we were just cool. Like from 1987, we was just cool. You know, going to the rink, going to laces, going. You know what I mean? Shout out to rink. And we was outside. You know, <laughs> we was outside the Q Club. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he's just my, you know, just my ultimate boy, and I always give him much respect for bringing me and and showing me and my family so much love throughout the years. So no question. You know, uh, you know, me and Dame is like that. So that's why he no put question. me on. I was running um, Fubu Kids. That's why I started, and yeah. then you know, I used to see Ted all the time from man. there. Every morning, go to the city, man, Empire State, man. That's we jump on that railroad. Yeah, that yeah. Long Island Railroad, right. man, and, and, and shout out to my brother Corleone. He was like, "Yo, tell Ted, I said what up." Yes, I sir. Seraphin. Ah! And we gonna talk about Seraphin in a second. Tiny, you got something to ask? Yeah, I got a question to ask, man. It was definitely nice meeting you. My question, I always wanted to know, right? I remember LL Cool J being a um. Let me say a promoter for Fubu, right? And I remember when he Post did that. Child. Yeah, that I remember guy. when he did that, that gap, gap commercial, commercial. Yeah. right, with the Fubu hat on. My question—that was genius. That was genius. My my question is: Did y'all plan that, or did y'all get any like any flack for that? Or no, nah, that, that was that all work? LL. That, that was, was all LL Cool J. You know, you know they was they wanted you know LO was so powerful that they wanted him to you know. Prepare the commercial, everything to do about the commercial. Yeah. So some they had said something to LL, um, and LL was like, you know, I I, I got something for y'all. Yeah. So he <laughs> said, you know, he don't want to wear, you know, because L's head is kind of yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. So he wanted to wear a hat. hat. So they say, you know, you can wear whatever hat you want. You want. So he put on the Fubu hat, and then he snuck in the for us by us on the low. Word. And that Word. got a lot of people fired at 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> at, yeah. Yeah. I guess. That commercial, 
that commercial was like thirty million dollars. Facts. A free advertising for, for Fubu. Facts. And that took us to a whole nother level. Big shout Facts. out to LL Cool J, man. His show man. too. His show. What yeah. about his show? He used to have like shirts that I never seen before. I used to look for them Fubu shirts Bro. that he had too, and I could never find those. Yeah, shirts. but like I said, big <laughs> shout out to LL Cool J, man. He's the you know reason why Fubu is what you know what Fubu is today. Bro. That's a fact. So my my question is how much how much equity or capital dollars that he have involved or you wouldn't know that well he was a he was a he was a he spokesperson was a he, was, he was a spokesperson for the company okay Ellen, Ellen need no bag. Oh wow, he got a bag though from us. But yeah, nah, he didn't need that. at that time. He didn't need that. He was on. <laughs> El was on top. Nah, I mean, he was already where he was. Yeah. But however, Shows that's not that. a bad investment from the next. Um, what I want to say is the next brand at that time because at that time black brands were thriving. You know oh, what right. I'm saying? Where you had Carl Kanai, Fat Farm, and yes. then you know Fubu, Cross, color, Cross right. Colors. Then yeah. Fubu came out of nowhere and, and wiped so everything right, off. Yeah, yeah, but every listen to this, yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't know this. We could have had all those brands. We, everybody came up to us. Really, Sean John came up to us. Get out of there. Rockwear came up to us. Big shots, my boy Willie Esco. Shout uh, out to Willie Esco. Yeah, Sean John came up to us. Uh, um, like I said, Rockwear, LRG. Damn, LRG. Um, what other one came up? NYC. 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 Fat Farm Fat too. Fat Farm. Woo. So Fat Farm. If we knew what we knew Fat now, we knew yeah. what we knew now. We would have you would have signed them up. Yeah, right. we would have signed them all up. <laughs> Aniche, yeah. NY, yeah. They call it Aniche. NYC. Yeah, Becca, so. All of that. Word. So let's move on to Coogee. How'd you get involved with the Coogee thing? Well, you know, from the football umbrella, we bought Coogee. Didn't Damon buy that, right? Yeah, Damon we bought it. Oh, we bought it back in. Damon um, purchased. Damon, yeah. I knew that. Damon, <laughs> yeah, listen. Damon yeah, purchased Coogee. Damon, uh, yeah. Damon purchased Coogee. I knew that. Yeah, it was uh, the you know the whole the whole you know Fubu family? They per we purchased um Coogee. Wow. So um yeah, so that's what we had Coogee for about since I think two thousand four. I think so. So y'all are the reason why now they started doing like what you have on right now, like the denim mixed with the sweater. Cause before Coogee was just Coogee sweaters and knitted hats and all that. Yeah, so Willie Esco actually revamped our brand back in uh -huh. 2014. Uh -huh. he, he said he was going to do it just with the sweaters, and so he made a collaboration with Kith. So he did Kith a cap. No, 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 no. It wasn't Kith. Kith first. It wasn't Kith first. It was actually um, it was actually Rag and Bones. He did a collaboration with Rag and Bones with ladies. Oh, Coogee just a sweater, and then he oh. did the collaboration. With, we did a collaboration with Kith. And Kiff does a lot of collaboration. They, like they, they do, with the they mix do, right now. I'm yeah, they sneak do. right in. I fuck That's with why all jackets. Every yeah, time I, I go to the all the Timberland collaborations. Yeah. Big shout out to Ronnie Ferg out yeah. there. Ronnie Ferg. Ronnie Ferg. They do a lot. You went to Cardozo. Yeah, they do a lot of the uh, Timberland. They do a lot of Tim uh, Tim collaborations with the Forty Belows. I'm a Forty Below guy. Shout out to so. three. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah they, threes they do Forty Belows. They, they do a lot yeah. of Forty Below collaborations. Yeah, the Forty Belows is classic. Now that gives, us, Cardoza, that gives us about two. Cardoza. That gives us about two inches. That's why. <laughs> In the height. <laughs> let them know. Let them know. Three. Man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let them know. Three. About none of that. Those are <laughs> those. Uh, <laughs> what's those other Nike joints? <laughs> I don't give a fuck about none of that, man. I do. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about none of that, man. So no, hold on one second. Yeah, but big yeah. shout out to Ronnie Fer of Ronnie Five because he did, you know, the Amir Griffin. Big shout, out, you know, RP Amir Griffin. Amir, man. So Bro. they did the um. Shout out to Tootie, man. Yeah, Bro. big shout out to my boy Tootie. You know, you know they gonna get that dude, bro. He, yeah, he was yeah. supposed to cop out yeah. to twenty five. He didn't take it. Wow. So, um, well, he gonna fry. Yeah, he, he gonna, gonna he gonna fry. He, he gonna, gonna go to fry. try. He gonna as, fry. As he no should. question you about that. No as question about that. But, yeah, but Tootie, we love you, boy. Right. You know, hold your head. You know, exactly. you know, you know, we there for you always. Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, but um, <laughs> yes. So, 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 how did explore? Well, explain the exploration into the alcohol now. Seraphim. Well, that was, you know, we did a lot of stuff, man. We did um perfume, we did yeah. we did uh NASCAR race that car. I didn't know. NASCAR Damn. race car. Nah, I didn't it know. was a whole lot of things we did. You know, you know the crazy part, uh we shot the commercial, everything big as mm. R. Kelly was our oh god alone, our oh, alone god. person back 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 in the days, and that's when the, the video came out, he was Peeing on chicks, <laughs> so 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 that scrapped all of that. Is that, is, 
<laughs> so is, is that just the business? Like, shoot your shot at whatever. Yeah, like it's sick. licensee. Yeah, yeah it's like called shoot licensee. Your, oh. Yeah, shoot your shot at whatever might, you know what I mean? Whatever might work, whatever might stick. Because FUBU and that whole conglomerate, y'all were at a point where, like, y'all was up, up, up. It was like, y'all ain't really have to fuck with nothing else but that. You know what I mean? But a lot of the urban brands kind of faded out because I think when y'all got to y'all peak, y'all sold it off. Never sold it y'all off. Y'all never, never sold it off? Never oh. sold it off. So, so Fat Farm sold off. Sean John sold off. I don't know what they did. Um, I don't <laughs> no, 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 no. But I'm saying, Carl Kanai did as well. Yeah. But I remember that Fubu kind of was like, so if you want to say it was a fad, mm-hmm. I would agree with that. Because I think that too many urban brands started to infiltrate the business and you had a lot of them. So we had Fat Farm, yeah. we had Fubu, we had Kalkana, we had Walkerwear, we had all these cross colors, yeah, we had yeah, all these yeah. different brands. Yeah. So I just feel like at some point, Guys started selling off. Fubu didn't. However, it kind of died down because we had everybody was in Fubu. LL, yeah, Nelly, yeah, yeah. y'all went to the jerseys. Facts. That was a hot thing. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that the fact that Damon was able to come back in and acquire Kooji, I think that was a smart business yeah. move because yeah. Kooji is a staple nah, in hip hop. Kid. Now we should have been. I got, I got three or four of them I bitches. This- <laughs> <laughs> we know. We, we know. <laughs> no, but I think it's unmatched. Tell but- <laughs> come in here. What's <laughs> but you know, again, big shout out to our licensees. Um, Heritage. Uh, they did this. this uh, That's fine. They are cutting soul licensee. I need that. But dang, I just forgot what I was gonna say. I know I'm getting a little older. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Wow. Don't, don't don't having an old man moment right now. Don't, don't blame me. Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, the thing is, um, I really forgot what I was going to say. About the licensees, Kooji, all the other companies. Yeah, so, you know, so it, it, you get, oh, okay, I know I was going to say that. Yeah. So with, we should have been, honestly, we should have been the black polo. Exactly. We should have been a black rapper. Right. Right. So what happened was, and you guys are gonna remember this after I say it, uh-huh. you know, you know, our FUBU brand was doing amazing. Uh-huh. And then we started to do what's called platinum FUBU. And platinum FUBU consists of Fat Albert. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. Muhammad Ali. Facts. I forgot the about The Harlem Gold Trotters. Yes. So, you know, after so after that, everybody was like this, like Yo, we want that platinum fubu because it was like iceberg in a sense. Yes, we don't want the fubu, we want yeah, that platinum, platinum fubu. fubu. Yes, so we should have kept just everything under fubu, yeah. all of the you know the license that we got. You would have got that, you would have got the regular customers, right? customers. We did, Rather we would have kept the couple customer only wanting fubu, not platinum. Yeah. Fubu. platinum. Yeah. It was like so, you, an exclusion thing, like so you kind of like separated. I brand. can't afford. I mm-hmm. can't afford iceberg, or I can't afford platinum fubu. I think you guys could have, but I just think that with most brands, when it comes to fashion, that at some point something else is gonna come that's gonna hit a little bit harder than what it was. But I just think that fubu is legendary. Like it don't matter Facts. what it mm-hmm. what 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 happened, what it was gonna be. I just like the fact that it was. It was brothers from our community That's a fact That was able to capitalize Same thing with Walker Hollis Queens Hollis Queens Hollis Queens Same same thing with Walker with You know what I mean It was able to And uh, Biggie was trying to do the same thing With Brooklyn Mint Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying So I just Mm -hmm. think that It's the same thing Rock away And they they eventually sold But Mm -hmm. I mean y'all It's legendary It's legendary It's a staple in hip hop It's Mm -hmm. a staple Like you couldn't walk down a block And not see somebody with FUBU on That's, (laughs) That's a fact that's a fact. That's a fact. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying is, as far as, you know, today's generation, they they have no clue of what FUBU is. No. Forced by us. You know that's what I mean? That's a whole Forced fact. by us. Remember Dada? Dada. Oh, yeah. Bro. Big shout out to my <laughs> man Mike Cherry. Mike right. Cherry. Yeah. Right. For real. Mike Cherry's in the building. Yeah. Right, they they signed Eddie Jones, and Eddie Jones had his own Eddie sneak Jones. and all that. Because right. I played in Chris the Eddie Webber. Jones Classic. Chris yeah. Webber had his all star game. Too. Yeah. So, right. I mean, it was a lane for that. You know what I mean? But... Fubu's gonna be forever recognized oh, and forever 
legendary. Big Queens. Know, somebody Big from Queens. our town. Somebody. Shout out to Queens, too. Yes. 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 Big Queens. Yes. And, and, Queens. And, 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 and you know, we sort of stole a little bit of the thunder earlier with the Queens question. We got to get your opinion on this before we get out of here. So, shout out to Cam, shout out to May, shout out to the is what it, it is what it is family. They had Sebastian on Ooh. recently. You know, he broke the internet. Disrespectful. But all, yeah, very disrespectful. <laughs> this is why I need to hear from you because, like three said, you played with a lot of guys out of New York City. You've seen a lot of guys play before us. Yeah. Who was the best point guard that you've per personally witnessed play in New York City? Mm. To come out of New York City. Ooh. We ain't talking just Queens. We talking I already know where you're going five to boroughs. I think it's Ken Kenny Anderson, bro. K.A.? K.A. Big K Queen. K.A. was different, bro. Like, different, Big Queen. different. No, nobody's ever going to go against that answer. Yeah, against K.A.? Different. Of course With not. Ross Strickland and, and uh, they, they weren't. They weren't what Earl Chip, Washington. They different, weren't different, what Chibs was, Chibs was tough, as a fucking <laughs> big queen. Shout out the left right. As big, a high school, big queen, as, a big middle, as a middle schooler to high schooler, they <laughs> weren't what he was. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know. I'm sorry, left rack. I gotta put this out there. <laughs> Kenny, Shout out the wild. Kenny's origin is from Southside. Kenny, Kenny House. Smith. No, no, Kenny Anderson. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 164th place, back streets, off of 107 in God Blue. He dude. played with Abaddon. That's, his, that's, his, yeah. that's the house he grew up in. That's yep. the house he grew up right. in. He moved from there at nine years old to left right. However, he played on the same court on 164th Street. Three, yep. three, three. Yep. Three, three. Him and Dave Edwards yep. used yep. to play one on ones every day. Wow. This is the real story. Abaddon. This is what it is. Let's so go. Kenny was raised in left rack. He's, he claims <laughs> left rack, <laughs> but he's a south side baby. <laughs> all, all, all big queens, he's though. A, all big queens. He's, 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 he's a south side baby, and I love him to death. That's my guy. <laughs> Still have a relationship with him to this day. I love him to death. Like He did something for me at a time when nobody would do anything for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people don't know when I when I left Bishop Lockham to go to Oak Hill, they didn't have a roster spot available, but I knew I was good enough to play at the, play on that team. Uh, Steve Smith from Oak Hill Academy. Shout out to Steve Smith. Heck yeah. He said, we don't have a spot. We don't have a scholarship. But if you come, I can't guarantee you nothing. And my pop said, my son would never come anywhere that he can't play. Mm -hmm. And he will say, who's going to pay the tuition? Kenny Anderson paid the tuition for me wow. to go to Oak Hill Respect. Academy. Shout out to Kenny Anderson, man. Respect. You know that. Respect. Respect. The, Respect. The rest is history, but nice. Respect. Chip is from Southside. I'm sorry for my left right. <laughs> for my left right guys on my live. <laughs> Chip is from Southside, but he was, you know what I mean? He he yeah. he planned his roots in, in left right, but he's from Southside off the back blocks of 164 and 107. Man, that's what's up, man. That's, so, so that's before, a fact. Before we get out of here, man, Coach Chuck, man, where can everybody pretty much go to support you and what you do and, and, and what's the next move for, for you? All right, so definitely to the rack is coming back. Yeah, to the rack is coming back. 2024, oh, God man. willing. I might have to, man. I got to wrap on up the, the block. block. Who's man, boy, on what? the block. We're oh, starting at 113. And uh, right between Colfax and 210th Street, hopefully oh. summer of 2024, you know, bring a touch to the rack back Let's in go. a big way. Uh, you know, huge. Nah, it's gonna be dope. huge. So that's that's, that's, that's the plan, man. And you know, and, and just just keep building with these kids, man. And you know, keeping them positive. That's no it. No question. You know? No question. Always man. that. No question, man. Well, listen, man. This is a special episode, man. I appreciate you coming in, Tup, man. Thank you for pulling up on us, man. You know what I'm saying? A whole legend. And it's some things that started clicking. Like, damn, why ain't never I let Tup? Being that I do fat. This guy over here in the corner always be on me about clothes and fashion. <laughs> And all of that stuff, you know what I'm saying? And, and not doing and, and stuff. Fire. Ted beat me two times this year. Yeah? <laughs> Ted, beat, Ted beat me two times this year. Oh. Oh. He, he beat me two times this year. Wow. But he already, he know I'm coming. <laughs> he know what it is. Oh, you talking about, oh, school. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so he know about it. He, he, he yeah. know what it is. He know what it is. Yeah. He know what it is. We coming, bro. He said he just need a few balls. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yo, yo, yo. Balls. we coming. Yeah. Like I told you, like three is going to do, going to do a great job over yeah. there. And yeah. I, like, again, you know, res much respect for you know. Thank you guys for having me. Come on, yeah. for real. Yeah. But yeah. three is definitely coming for sure. Yeah. I know. He just got to get you know, he, get that senior class out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you can build. You know what I mean? Build your own foundation. Listen, man. Like, like, um. A lot of shit be going on behind the scenes, man. And like Tut, me and Tut is kind of cut from the same cloth. Like he's over there doing the best with the kids that he, he he's afforded to and he got. And I know that his intentions are good. And that's why I love him to death, man. And I'm doing the same thing over here at Van Buren trying to get the proper kids to, you know what I mean? Some of these kids might not even see what we've seen. They might not even be offered anything. You 100%. know what I'm saying? So I try to preach to them daily that. Bro, you got to be that guy to get a Division One scholarship. You know, sure. you got to be that guy to have a college coach to say, I need you, but I love what you're doing over there. I don't like the step that y'all took back going into this division. I don't like the step that we took. Coach Bono, if you're watching. Yeah, I don't like the step. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the step that we took back going into this division. But, however, I know your intentions are pure, brother. I know that you just want the best for them kids, and that's all I want. I don't want nothing out of this shit but to change one or two kids' lives to say that. You know what I'm saying? Coach Jones taught me some shit that I didn't even know. Like, this basketball shit could change my life. That's a whole thing. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So that, that's all it's about for me. 100%. I don't need, like, fuck the money. The money ain't going to change nothing for me. That's, that's a fact. fact. That's a fact. Just one that's more question. We're we going to wrap it up all after right. this. One more question. For anybody that's getting into the fashion world, Oh, that's Don't do it. Nah. <laughs> yeah, but, but what I'm saying, because before you said there was people that came to you um, and you turned them down, or if you know what you know now. So if there was anybody out there that had a brand and they came to you, would you sign to them? Would you do anything with them? Or what should they do? First thing is the powers in the paperwork, right? I always right. tell any of the young art, you know, uh, designers or anything like that, the powers in the paperwork. So first thing and foremost, you know, you got to, you got to straighten up that trademark. So yeah, whatever yeah, name yeah. you have, yeah. jump yeah, on US, USPTO.gov. That's already good. USPTO.gov and, and, and lock that trademark down yeah. because I've seen it happen to a lot of, you know, people, especially people like us, that, you know, they go out, they make their brand hot, and then they don't yeah. trademark it. Yeah. Somebody go right under, you know, right under the table and boom, snatch it up. Yeah. And now they send you a cease and desist. So that's, a fact. that's the first and foremost yeah, is the powers in the paperwork. You know, you, you can YouTube it, like how to trademark without an attorney, yes. how to, you know, how to search up a trademark on people. YouTube. Yep. And um, again, that's the first and foremost thing that you do. And you have, and again, you have to love, you have to love what you do. That's a whole fact, man. Word up, man. Shout out to Coach Tup, man. This is a great episode, man. Shout out to DJ JOJ, man. Shout out to 3D. JOJ. Shout out to yes, Charlie for pulling up on us, man. Yes, no sir. No off season on Bars and Hoops Radio every Friday, 8 to 10. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Until next week, we are signing off. Peace. Peace.